Welcome to this React.js course. My name is Yastani Chodri and I'll be your instructor in this course. In this course, you will build a fully functional responsive portfolio website. To build this responsive portfolio website, we will use React.js, Node.js, Express.js and Bootstrap to make it responsive. This project is responsive to any kind of device such as mobile, tab and web view. We will also use different kinds of React packages for different features. In this portfolio project, you will build a sidebar with collapse features and smooth scrolling to navigate in different sections. You will learn how to add and download features to download CP from React.js app. We will use the React Vertical Timeline component to show the work experience and education section with animation. In the project section, you will learn how to use React Accordion features with React Onmon Server effect to show the project list. In the Tech Stock section, you will learn to implement a lot more pagination features. Dark and light theme features are included in this project. I have used React Context API to add dark and light theme features. So you are also gonna learn how to use React Context API to add dark and light theme features. To send email, we will use Node.js, Express.js, NoteMailer and SendGrid. At first, we will build our backend API to send an email and then we will connect our API with our React.js application. So you will learn how to do post request work with the backend API and connect it with React frontend. In the end, you will learn how to deploy a React.js project to Netlify cloud server so that your project can be accessible from anywhere in the world. Therefore, I will highly encourage you to enroll in this course. Welcome to this video. In this video, I will show you the complete project that you are gonna build in this course. So this is the complete uh, portfolio web application that you are gonna build in this course. You can see this animation. So when you load our website for the very first time, we can see this different kind of animation. So on the top, we have this home section and then in the left side, we have this sidebar. And this sidebar is collapsible. If I click on this icon, you can see that now we have this only icon sidebar I click on it now we have this image and these details and by default now we're in the home section so this home is gonna marked now I am in this about section now you can see this about is marked so as I will scroll down it's gonna mark based on the section now you can see that work experience so here this work experience I have used for I have used a react a vertical timeline component to make this a work experience features this timeline component and now as I scroll down it's gonna appear new items with animation you can customize everything here you can see for different items I have added different colors so dynamically based on the position based on the items we have you can show different colors after that uh, we have this tech stack section and you can see this cool animation as I scroll down and now we have this load more pagination features here and if I hover these items we can see this little hover effect and the first one is gonna be by default marked so I'm gonna click on the load more and we can see three more button three more tech stack option is gonna appear here again I click on it and I don't see but now we don't have this load more button anymore because we don't have any other tech stack options to show so you are gonna learn how to add a lot more pagination in React.js application. After that we have this education section with this animation and then this project section. So in the project section you can showcase your project, your project name, title, technology stack that you have used in your project. For example, you can see we have uh, 
as soon as I hover these options, as soon as I hover these options, it's gonna collapse and then we have, uh, if I again click on it, it's gonna hide, it just hover this option, it's gonna collapse, so I have used on mouse hover effect here, so you're gonna learn how to do this on mouse hover effect and you can build this kind of colors options and for each and every text stack, these are the random color. Alright, then we have testimonial, in the testimonial section, I, you can see slider so to add this slider I used the react slick slider and you can see this different kind of color for each and every slick slider I have options and this project this slick slider is responsible also in mobile device and at the bottom have this contact form for each and every items you can see little animation is coming from left side or right side or bottom so you are gonna learn how to add animation for react component and from here we can send email okay so this is the contact form and this is and here in the right side you can see this back to top scroll button if i'm gonna click on it then it's gonna appear here on the top okay again if i click on the hire me it's gonna take me to this contact me section so now and here by clicking these options you can see this smooth scrolling we can just uh, visit any section without any problem here you can see this testimonial contact and everything is working fully functional now let me send you let me show you how to send email here if i click on it in the send button i can see this latest validation message in list this toast message it says please add your name i'm gonna say mark just an example name and then i'm gonna say mark at the rate gmail.com then job types like if i click on it it says that please add job type so each and every field has validation and this message is coming from the backend API that we will build to send email so now I'm gonna say working students and here again click on it it says add your message now I'm gonna say hi I have a I have a job for you let me know let me know if you have time for it now if I click on the send message send button you can see this toast message says your email has been sent now we should be able to see our email here you can see you can see name mark email and job types working student and this is the message hi i have a job for you let me know if you have time for it i have also added dark and light theme features here i click on it you can see now we are in the dark theme mode in the dark theme mode we can we can and have a different color and different design you can see in dark mode we have different background color so you are going to learn how to add dark and light theme to build this dark and light theme features i used to react context api so you are also going to learn how to use react context api and pass data from one component to another component and dynamically change the theme color and you can see this little uh, rotate animation this sidebar we have added uh, this scroll uh, this custom scroll bar as well and here we have this get resume option so now if i click on this one this is gonna download your resume you can see this is the down resume that we can get and now in the project section we also have this live demo button so if i click on this live demo it's gonna open it's gonna open my project that uh, i have built like this project okay so click on the live demo it's gonna open in a new tab and you will be able to show see the project here so now let me show you the responsive view this project is fully responsive as well in edit device now if i am in the mobile view then you can see it's gonna look like this in the ipad version and we have this um, drop never drop down never and based on the section it's gonna automatically select it here and then here i have added this switch button to change the theme so now i click on it now we have a dark theme again i click on it then light theme this entire application is responsive in any device and if I click on the hire me button in the tab view I can still send messages here and you will be able to see the toast message is coming here so now I am in the mobile view so let's say iPhone 12 Pro so in iPhone 12 Pro it's gonna look like this and each and every item each and every field is responsive and fully functional in any kind of device so I tried my best to add a different kind of functionalities uh, with proper explanation so that you exactly know what you are writing. Alright, see you in the lecture.
Oh, welcome to this lecture. In this part, we will start working on our project. So this is our cool project that we are gonna build in this course. So for that, first and foremost, we need to create a project, okay? So open your VS Code or any other any other IDE where you want to write your code, but I'm gonna use VS Code. All right, so this is the VS Code. Right now, I don't have any file, so I'm gonna open a folder. So open your VS Code, create a folder where you want to save your project. So I'm gonna click on open folder. And from here, I'm gonna go here. And this is my folder directory where I want to store my project. So this is the folder where I want to store my project file, okay? Portfolio website, React.js. So just select a folder where you exactly want to save your project, okay? Now this is our project and now we can see this uh, folder directory but still we don't have anything here because we didn't install our react.js so click on this terminal click on this new terminal and here i am gonna install my react.js project so i'm gonna say npx create react app and so you need to write npx create a react app after that here your project name so I, I'm, I'm gonna say client okay inside this folder directory inside this um, client folder name my project is gonna install and this client will be inside this folder okay so npx create a react app and this is going to be our project name all right so I'm gonna say client and then hit enter and then it is gonna start installing our react JS application you can see that it has started and here you go it has created a new folder and inside this client folder we are gonna have all of our react.js file and code okay i'm doing it in this way because uh, we will also use um, node.js for uh, sending email functionalities all right therefore i am just separating our front in react code and then here we will have our node.js code so you just need to write npx create react app for creating react app and any name here you want to give to store to install your react.js application and it is gonna take a couple of minutes to install and in the meantime i can explain you a few things that we are gonna build so we're gonna build this complete project and here you can see that we have this sidebar we have this sidebar and then we have this header and this type writing effect to use to add this type writing effect we will use a package and then hire me if i click on the hire me it's gonna come here and here we will add different kind of uh, in here we will add our email sending functionalities and let me click on the back to top and after that what we have we have our about section and then this work experience section so first i will start by doing this side neighbor and then we will add each and every section and then we will connect it with our uh, never okay you can see that i'm in about section this about this about is gonna automatically select it work experience is gonna select it to add this um uh, functionalities we will use a package called uh, 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 npm react smooth scrolling we're gonna use a package here i will show you how to do it and then we will use another package to do this work experience functionalities and this project is fully responsive and for that we are gonna use bootstrap you can see this project is fully responsive in any kind of device and for that we're gonna use a bootstrap so we'll also have to install this bootstrap okay let me see if it has finished the installation process uh, it has installed not modules and still it is gonna take a couple of minutes to complete the whole process and so here this is the official website of get bootstrap and from here we will use our bootstrap so you can read their instruction i will show you and if you click on the doc then here you go they have this quick start functionalities you can directly copy this code then start but we just need their uh, css file which is this link from include bootstrap css and js and after that they have this script file so we're gonna we're also gonna use there this two script file and this script link and these are the two links that uh, we will have to uh, that we will have to use to get all the functionalities of bootstrap 
okay so directly come to this get bootstrap and then install they also have npm install you can also choose it but i'm gonna use this link i will show you how we do it and i will show you how we do it so here you go so this is our project that has been installed now we can see that portfolio website react.js and here you go so portfolio website and it has installed everything and here it gives us a couple of instructions how to run this project so i'm gonna say you can see inside the source directory we have all this file and then we have this public directory where this is our main header file we have our index.html and mainly we will work in this source directory okay so now let me run this one to run this project it says that cd client because we need to be inside the project directory which is our for us is for me is client cd client and then i'm gonna say npm start to run this project okay so to run this project and here we go Okay, so it says something is already running. So um, one of my project is running in another device. There's the reason it's asking something is running. But for you, if you're running only one project, then it is not gonna ask you. And here you go. So it is gonna open in our browser and hopefully we will be able to see it. And uh, we will be able to see our project. And inside the package.json file, we will we have all of our dependencies you can see it has installed react react dom react script and a couple of other frameworks here and as we will install new packages it is going to also appear here okay so now and inside the public directory we have index.html file and here we will have to add our bootstrap link here you go so this is our empty project we don't have anything right now so what I'm gonna do open this app.js file and here we have all this auto generate code so I'm gonna remove all this and then I'm gonna write it so I, I'm using a snippet called um, I'm, I'm using a snippet so if I write RFCE then it's gonna give me all the functionalities but if you are not using it then you can simply write import react.js I mean you just write it manually so import react from react this way and then create a arrow function so const app arrow function and here you go and you need to export it you can say export default app and inside this app directory you need to return and inside this return we are gonna add all of our code so here we need to add this and let's say just a demo text I can say hello react and I'm gonna save it and if I'm in the browser we can see hello react now the thing is that you might you might be wondering that um, why I am using this is our project yeah so uh, you might be thinking that why we are using here app so the reason is that here you will see index.js and this app directory you can see this app is connected with this root render okay so make sure that your main header file so when you run your project this app.js is gonna get called because this app.js is connected with this index.js if you want to change the name then it's totally fine you can give any name here but then in that case you will have to import it here also and then connect it here so this is how it works so this index.js file is connected with this app.js so you can assume that this app.js is your main file that is gonna get rendered as soon as you run your application okay so it doesn't matter how many component you have you are gonna connect it in this app.js and this app.js is connected with index.js okay so this is how it should work so now we have this react project now let's connect our boot stuff here and to connect this bootstrap go to this uh, quick installation and include bootstrap css so i'm going to copy this link here i'm going to copy this intel link and open this public directory here so open this public directory inside this public we have index.html and here we have our title after this title i'm gonna i'm gonna paste this link to add bootstrap make sure that you don't do any 
changes here because we exactly need the same link and they also have this javascript file because some function for some functionalities we will need this javascript and then i'm gonna copy so we just need to copy this script file and then we just paste it in our project directory okay so this is our three links that is required to add our project here and then after that here you can see this is the name of our project so we can simply change the name also this title is coming in the browser okay we will do it later but before that let me run this project again and let me close close the previous server okay so i'm gonna say cd client cd client and then i'm gonna say npm start and it is gonna start our project so to work with the bootstrap you just need to add this li true link this two link uh this three link from the bootstrap website and then put it in your index.html and we can see our project here but let's see if our bootstrap class has added so in the a stack i'm gonna define a class name here and here i'm gonna say card so bootstrap has uh, has a class called card to show the card so i saved it and you can see this card shadow it means that we have successfully installed our bootstrap in our react.js application there's a reason you can see this card property all right so um we can also check it by writing their button class so button btn success so this is a class from bootstrap and oh, okay so it is not gonna work in the in diff tag it's gonna work in the button tag oh, okay uh, it, it will work there but i think i've written it wrong spelling yes so now it should work so you can see we we can see this uh, green color button in from bootstrap class all right it's just an example uh, just an example nothing else so we have installed our bootstrap successfully and in the next part we will start working on our site nav bar and all this so i'm going to stop this video right here we will continue with from next lecture oh welcome back once again in this part we will start working on our sidebar so here if you look at here carefully that then you can see that our sidebar in the left side is always fixed and then in the right side we have all this component so particularly this home section and this sidebar section is gonna connected together because in this home section you can see that we have container fluid it means that this background color is gonna take place entire uh, to the entire white of our web app and for all other component we're gonna start from the middle that we call container so if we need full screen then we call it container fluid okay so there's a reason that we will have a little bit of um uh little bit of uh, changes in the sidebar and home section then all these uh, other components here okay so how we do it it's very easy to do it because we will have to add uh, two two component in our sidebar one is for sidebar and another one is for home but we will create the home section separately so let's start working on it so now first and foremost i'm gonna create a component folder inside the source directory okay so create a folder called component i'm gonna say component okay inside this component we're gonna add all of our file so um we can directly start working on it so first let's create our file here um just create a test file test.js we're not gonna use anything here i'm creating it because right now we don't have any file here if i directly create a folder then it's gonna add some kind of forward slash just an example i will remove it later and now inside this component folder i'm gonna create a folder called sidebar so inside the sidebar we will have to write our sidebar and our sidebar list so this part will contain our in the sidebar folder we will add this sidebar and this home we will connect it and the sidebar list will contain all this okay so to do so let's create a folder here called not folder a js file called sidebar dot js and then i'm gonna create an arrow function here so just define an arrow function sidebar 
and then I'm gonna create a CSS file here for this sidebar. So I'm gonna say sidebar.css and let's connect this sidebar.css here because we will need some CSS. So I'm gonna say import forward slash sidebar.css and now now I can remove this test file folder because I don't need this file. Okay, so I did a mistake here. Now it's gonna happen the same thing because we will need to one more folder or file. You can see if I remove this one, then it's gonna add this forward slash section. Okay, we will need one more file for that. And then after that I will remove it. All right, so here let's create another section for home section, okay? for this home section. So I'm gonna create another section called home and inside this home let's create home.js file and I'm gonna add rfc and again we need a CSS file for this one so I'm gonna say home.css and let's connect this home.css in the home file home.css Cool. So for each and every file, we will have a separate CSS file. This way we will be able to maintain our code easily. We are not going to write all of our CSS, CSS properties in one CSS file. Okay, don't do it because when you are going to write a lot of code, it is going to be difficult for you to maintain your code. So we have our component inside this component. We have folder based on our features and inside the feature, inside each features, inside each section, you can say we will have one JS file where we will write our React code and we will have one CSS file for that uh, JS file, okay? So this is how we will do it. I think now I can remove this test file. Yes, so now no, there isn't any issue here. You can see inside the component, we have these two in a folder. One is home, one is sidebar. Now, this sidebar, I will have to connect with the app.js file. So I'm gonna add import. I'm gonna type sidebar just import your folder name your your project your file name js file name called sidebar and then from the directory dot component sidebar sidebar and I'm gonna remove this one here so for now let's add an empty fragment here and then add our uh, not our home this is going to be our sidebar this sidebar all right, so this is our sidebar. And if I open our app now, we can see this sidebar text because this sidebar is connected with our app. This sidebar is connected with our app.js. And there's a reason that you can see this one, okay? So this sidebar text is connected with app.js. All right, so now in this sidebar, we will have to add our main class name okay so this one is going to be a container fluid so i'm gonna say container fluid so this container fluid means we want to have background color or we want to add our this background color for the entire screen okay there's a reason that bootstrap has a class property called um, uh, container fluid and they also have container which is this which is this because it is started from the middle of the page so to do to do this we will use container now inside this container fluid i am gonna add i'm gonna define a section name here so this container fluid directly coming from bootstrap and you have to write it in exactly the same spelling if you do any mistake here it is not gonna work so now after that i'm gonna add a section sidebar section you can give any name whatever you want and inside this sidebar section i'm gonna have two div one div will contain our this sidebar and another div will contain this home section all right to do so i will have to write um we will do it so we have our sidebar section then here we will create two more div one is for sidebar list and another one is for our um sidebar options so we will do it in our next part. See you in the next lecture. Welcome back once again. So we were created our file for this sidebar section. Now in the sidebar, we will have to divide it into two parts. So first one, I want to say div 
and this div is going to be our this div will contain our sidebar and here I'm gonna add another div for this part for this home section okay so how we do it so let's define a class name here I'm gonna say sidebar and we will change this class name dynamically I will show you in a minute and then here we need another class name called div and this time I want to define it as container because this text I mean this container will contain only this information and this entire container fluid will contain our whole background color that we have here okay so this is the way to divide it and we can say here class name and this time I'm gonna say container okay uh, just for an example just add some text here we will change it later we can say home section we will separate this home section later we will connect this component but now what we have we can see our home section here but we don't have our sidebar right now so let's add our sidebar so first we need to define our sidebar section so copy the sidebar section class name and open this sidebar.css here I'm gonna add display flex because we need two things in one row one div so for that we use our uh, display uh, flex so I'm gonna add so this is our sidebar section and inside this sidebar section I'm gonna say display flex and then add a background color so I'm gonna choose color code 03 03 03 and then DA now we see this color code this kind of background color okay uh, we will fix it in a moment now we have another class called sidebar this class will contain our whole sidebar section this sidebar section and I'm gonna copy this sidebar and here I'm gonna say height height is going to be 100 pixel 100 vertical not pixel so we want to have full screen height vertically there's a reason that I have added 100 vertical and then I'm gonna choose background color I'm gonna choose the same background color here and for this sidebar I am gonna choose white 95 pixel let's see what we have now so now we have these things but now we also have this is the sidebar color that we are getting but here we are also getting this background color because we added this background color here for the entire section so I'm gonna comment this for now now here is our sidebar and here is our home section but here we can see this little uh, space here but we don't have it here right okay so when users will call out, click on this icon we will show them this bigger sidebar okay so you can see that we don't have any space to reduce this space this space basically comes from this container fluid that we have here let me explain you again what we did here so I defined a class name here called container fluid because we need so because I need this home section for this uh, for this home section I need container fluid therefore I define a container fluid and this sidebar section is con gonna contain our entire design part so here I added sidebar section display flex so that we can show this sidebar this sidebar and this section you can see now we can see two things here one is our sidebar and one is our home section this is the way to show now uh, two things in one row because this one and this one is one row in one row here and we are using a, a flex box here CSS property now this container fluid we need to call to reduce the unnecessary uh, padding and margin that we have and here I will have to write padding and margin 0 pixel and then it is gonna remove so I'm gonna say padding left is going to be 0 pixel and this symbol and import important and then I need to write padding right is going to be same this thing so we can just copy this one 
and overflow I'm gonna add hidden let's see if it has removed you can see that now we don't have any space here now we need to define this kind of um, hide and white for this one okay so now we have this option here let's fix this uh, let's complete the sidebar first and then we will work with the home section this home section will connect it will come from this place from this home component okay so now this one is coming from this one but we will use this home section home component because we will separate all these functionalities in home component so let's add this home component here so I'm gonna add this home component I'm gonna say import home and this home I'm gonna add this home component I'm gonna add here instead of this text so now still we have this home okay now if I change the text here we can say home section here then it should show home section here okay so now we will try to finish first this sidebar then we will add all these functionalities for this uh, home section so here we can see that if our sidebar is not expanded then we have this white which is this white and we can see this icon and as soon as we click on it we see this bigger sidebar for that I'm gonna add another div inside this sidebar okay so let's define another div here and this div will contain our um, our contain our this icon that we will show here to add our to dynamically uh, collapse our sidebar okay you can see dynamically changing it and for that I'm gonna say a class name here I'm gonna say class name I can say icon for sidebar expand icon for sidebar expand okay Ex expand and we can say and collapse always try to give some meaningful name okay now I'm gonna copy this class name in the CSS because we need to design this thing and here we will have to write our CSS property so I'm gonna add a background color so give a background color so background color is going to be before that I think we need to add the icon otherwise we won't understand anything here we don't have any icon so to use icon I'm gonna use npm react icon so this is the package that we're gonna use to add icons okay and this is their official website so you install react icon this is their official website and it's very easy to use so visit npm react icons here and then click on it and we need to install it in our project so I'm gonna to cd client remember that our project is installed in this cd client directory this is our main project folder so we need to install it here and then I'm gonna say hyphen hyphen force and it is gonna install as soon as it's installed we will be able to use the icon so here they have a lot of icons so like bootstrap icon box icon how we will use this icon is very to use you can see we just need to import this one and these are the name of the icon we, we just need to copy this icon name and then we can just reuse it so they have icon um, they have icon called BS something so let's copy this one first so I'm gonna copy this import here and you can see that it has installed so inside the sidebar we need to import this one and here we need to add the icon name so I, I'm gonna search the icon name here called BS BS cover left or something let's see if we have any so we don't have with this name and it should be CSE I think and now we can see a couple of icons here we can see this one BS cover left so I think it's also in, in the boot stuff yeah this is the be a bootstrap icon so whatever icon you will use you just need to copy this one and change the name based on the first two words so it's bs so it's bs if you go if you come here fe then you can see fi for flood icon you can see fc okay just copy this one and then change the 
name here and put the name here so we're gonna use this bootstrap icon called uh, where is it I think this one I'm gonna copy this name just click on it and then put it here okay and you can see BS and here we have BS so this is how we can use if you import if you use another icon then just change the import name and then we need this one alright so now here I want to I'm gonna put our p tag and I'm gonna put the icon here for example let's put this one first we will dynamically change the icon later just for an example now and put the size is 30 you can change the size this size is the size of the icon for example this size okay so now let's come here and change the background color add a background color so background color I'm gonna choose hash and the background color is going to be I do have my color code so I'm gonna just write it here 190 so you can use any kind of color code whatever you prefer and then uh, I'm gonna add padding 5 pixel I'm gonna choose the color here is going to be not white color is going to be white after that border radius 5 pixel let's see what we have now so we have this design so far all right but it doesn't look like this is because that I'm just using this uh, class name but here you can see that after this class we have a ptech and for the and this icon called SVZ icon so we need to call this one here after this class name add ptech and then add SVZ now we should see now we should see our icon and here is our icon and now we need to add we can add here I can say add margin top 50 pixel all right so now we have this icon just over here but now uh, we did all this design for this icon but only for this class and this class is contained this whole things so we need to add flexbox to put it in the right side okay because here you can see that this one is in the right side in the right side okay how we do it so just copy this class name here and here we need to add a display flex and I'm gonna add align items right align items right justify content right justify content is going to be right and then put cursor pointer to have a hand symbol here you go so now we have our icon and exactly the same way we have it here all right so if you want you can also change the background color of this icon whatever you prefer and now we need to add some kind of condition here for example when user click on it we show this bigger size of thing so how we do it for that I'm gonna define a state here in the sidebar and then dynamically change the class name so first import react use state hook so I'm gonna choose use state and here I'm gonna inside this class I am gonna add a one uh, use state I'm gonna say const expand sidebar sidebar is going to be set expand sidebar and then I'm gonna add use state and here I'm gonna add is true by default I'm gonna give it a true I will show you if you make changes how it changes. so now here I, I I will have to add a function let's define an arrow function here I'm gonna say on click so const I can say handle click handle expand click and this is going to be an arrow function here and inside the arrow function I'm gonna say set expand sidebar 
is going to be our expand sidebar so when user will click on this function we're gonna make it true or false by default it is true if they click this function then it's going to be false again they click it's going to be true there's a reason that i have added this symbol and this one it means that whatever we have it is going to change it opposite and positive opposite and positive it's true you click it 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 becomes false again you click it becomes true okay now we need to add this function name what i mean by this by this one so by default it's true if i click on it it's false if it's false then we have this small again you click on it it gets true it's true we can see this thing this this bigger sidebar now i am gonna add this thing in our p tag because when user click on the p tag p tag contains our entire things or we can also do it here i think let's see here what we have here if i click outside yeah it is working so we can add this function in this p tag i'm gonna say on click so inside the on click inside this p tag on click we just need to call our this function which is going to be this handle x1 on click okay now here we can dynamically change our icon okay how we do it now this functionality contain this one so using this one we can take this true or false right this is how this uses to work in react chase we define it true when you click it it makes it gets false again click it gets true and how we expect uh, how we um access this information using this one so here i'm gonna add a condition so i'm gonna add a condition here and inside this i'm gonna add this one so and i'm gonna i'm gonna add a ternary operator here and if it is true then i'm gonna show this uh, left which is this icon if it is true then i'm gonna show it here if it is false if it is false then i'm gonna show this icon which is right icon and i'm gonna choose it this way and the size is going to be 30 here let me format this one so what i did here i just added a ternary operator here inside this p tag and said that if this one is true then show this icon if this one is false then show this icon let's see what we have now so now we said that if it is true then show the left icon let's make it false just for example if it is false then we should see the right icon and now we have this right icon it means that our function is working now if you look at here and this white is coming from this sidebar we said that hide 100 pixel 100 vs and white 950 95 pixel okay and this sidebar is this sidebar that is gonna contain our this sidebar sorry this one that is gonna contain our entire sidebar main sidebar okay this whole sidebar so here we can change the class name dynamically using the same ternary operator how we do it let me show so inside the curly brace i'm gonna say this one if this is true if this is true then we show one class not if it is false then we show another class okay so i'm sorry i need to cut it here this way and the curly brace should be here okay so here what i am saying that by default if it is true sorry it is true okay by default by default if it is true then we will show one class name else we will show this sidebar okay we can say uh, we can give it a name meaningful name maybe we can say here uh, for example let's say for example this sidebar we can call it sidebar or we can call it sidebar collapse not collapse call it sidebar and this one we can call it sidebar expand expand but still we need to define this one also here because we want to have all the design that we have that we have in this sidebar okay it has gone now because i added this class name here now if i put this class name here again then it should see it show it here 
uh, you can see that we can click it if I click on it it's gonna change but this one is not changing now and the reason is that so here what I said that if it is true I added it under operator and then show this class name else show this class name I also added this class name so that I get all the design from this one because same design I'm not gonna add here now let's call this one and in that case if sidebar is expand then we show bigger size I mean more space here for that define this class name here sidebar expand and here I will have to add the white of this one for sidebar expand let's say white is going to be 230 pixel okay now here you go now we can see that I click on it this is the smaller I click on it this is the bigger and at the same time icon is gonna change okay the icon is gonna change the same way that we have here the same way we have it here cool everything is fine and now we will have to add all this list here in our uh, list in our uh, sidebar okay so we did our major sidebar collapse feature okay and in the next part we will try to add our sidebar items and then we will show all of this sidebar okay all right so i'm gonna stop this video right here and we'll continue with from next lecture so welcome back once again in this part we will try to add all of our sidebar item all right so so far we did this design we can show and hide our sidebar i mean collapse and show it but still we need to do little fixing here so you can see that it's just removing but it should be fixed so we need to make sure that our sidebar is in fixed position so this is our sidebar that contains our sidebar these details okay so here i'm gonna say open the css file and here i'm gonna say uh, position position is going to be fixed and then our sidebar is gonna stay in the fixed position and then it is not gonna remove okay now it's time to add our items here how we do it for the item so you can see that uh, as I told you that this is our icon and this is our sidebar and after this sidebar we will have to add our icon here okay so this is our sidebar inside the sidebar we have this part for showing this icon and now after that we will have to add all of this sidebar item but I want to do it in a separate file instead of writing all this thing here it's better to add a sidebar list file okay so I'm gonna say sidebar list dot js I'm gonna copy this one and create a function here import it and I'm gonna create another CSS file for sidebar list so I'm gonna say sidebar list dot CSS and connect this sidebar list file to this uh, sidebar list JS file so I'm gonna say import sidebar list dot CSS file now we need to import this sidebar list in our sidebar file so this is our sidebar div inside the sidebar div I'm gonna add this sidebar but before that we need to import our sidebar here sidebar list so I'm gonna say import sidebar list now copy this sidebar list and add it here all right now we should be able to see our sidebar text here you can see sidebar list but it's black by default and our background is black that's the reason we can't see it but we will fix it in a moment now inside this sidebar list we will have to add all of our design all of our sidebar items so how we do it to do so first and foremost I'm gonna create a fragment here and then and then uh, we will define our class here but later we will change it so first uh, first let's add here we can say this one is going to be our react fragment so I'm gonna say react dot fragment inside this react fragment let's create another div so what happened here 
remove this one so here I'm gonna add another div here and this div class name is going to be nav items you can say nav bar items this nav bar items is gonna contain our all of the nav bar item all this okay so based on this we will do our design so inside this nav bar items we will have two things first we will have our uh, profile picture and then all this list but let's add the list first then we will work on the profile picture section okay or we can do it before this one also so here all right let's add the profile picture first so I'm gonna say div class name is going to be we can say sidebar profile pic sidebar profile pic and inside the sidebar profile pic we need to add our image okay so I'm not gonna add this image I'm gonna add my image so I'm gonna create a image folder here inside this component directory okay inside this component directory or we can also do it outside of this component okay let's create a e folder here um inside the source directory so i'm gonna say image and i'm gonna put my image here that i have here so i'm gonna just drag my image inside this image folder all right so now we have our image so now i'm gonna import this image here in the sidebar list i'm gonna say import i'm gonna say profile peak and then the directory of the image what what it's saying import profile pics from double directory we are outside of the home directory of the component directory so now this is our image folder and inside this image folder our file name is a.jpg remember that you need to write the extension clearly now here let's define the image tag that we use to show our image and here we need to add our source and then show our image which is our profile pic now we should be able to see our image here but it is uh, not in a good condition now because we need to add a css design and here we also need to add ultra for example for some reason if we can't show the image then we're gonna show here a message called profile picture that's it and okay so it should be inside the condition now copy this class name to add the required design for this image so i'm gonna say sidebar profile pic and here i will have to write css properties for the design of the profile picture and inside this class name we have one image tag and then we have our image here so i'm gonna add here this image tag all right now inside this let's add a border radius so add a border radius uh, 90 pixel and then at margin top 10 pixel height and weight I'm gonna give it height 150 pixel and white I'm gonna give 150 pixel after that we need uh, display flex we are gonna use it we are gonna use flex box to put it in the center and then a vertical align let's see what we have now so we have now this look we need to put it in the center the way it has here so for that I'm gonna put it display flex and then vertical align is going to be middle vertical and middle and then add uh, margin 0 auto it will put our image in the center okay now we have our image in the center but the image is not in a good condition we need to use object fit cover for that now i'm gonna say object fit is going to be cover and now it looks good after that 
I'm gonna add a border radius here. So border radius, three pixel solid, uh, not border radius, it should be border. Three pixel a solid yellow and it looks good now so we have our image but we need to fix this one if we are in a small screen then we don't want to show this image like this okay how we do it for that we are gonna use media query and we're gonna hide our image if um, we can we don't need to use this media query because we are gonna add a condition here for example if it is true if it is true then we will show this if it is false then we're not gonna show it so we don't need to use media query here because this component this expense sidebar we will have to pass here and then we will have to add the condition so let's add this one first so here I'm gonna pass a props at curly bracket and here I'm gonna say this expand sidebar and here in our component pass this expand sidebar and then put it here so this name is equal to this name you can give any name here whatever you want it is not mandatory that you have to give this name but just to make um, make it in the same name i just using the same name here okay this name is equal to this name and we are passing these props now we will be able to receive this true and false this condition in our list and how we will add the condition here so we will say that if it is true then we are gonna show this one else we will show uh, something else okay so these neighbor items will contain our information with the text okay let me add it so this neighbor items is gonna hold all of our information okay this neighbor items so here I'm gonna add a condition here so I'm gonna say this expense sidebar if this expense sidebar is true then we will show something else we will show something okay and then I'm gonna copy this one here I'm gonna cut it and put it inside format it and here just for now just for example just put another div here so that it doesn't give us any error now if it is true then we show these things else we show these things now what we have here okay if it if we collapse it then we don't have this image anymore because what I said here I said that if this one is true if this statement is true then we will show this number items else we will show we will not show the image here so we don't have the image here and in this in this upper in this function I mean in this condition we will add this only this icon icon side navbar okay all right so we have our navbar items and this navbar items is gonna contain our image and then we will have all of our list that we will have here in our sidebar let me explain you one more time you don't get so that you don't get confused so here I'm passing a props and this props is exactly the same thing that we have here to show and hide our to expand and collapse our sidebar and we're passing these props and here we are saying that if this statement is true then show these navbar items else we will show another navbar items which will contain only these icons okay if it's true then it's gonna contain this image and all this uh, on the sidebar with that with the title or only the icon okay so here we will do the same thing and here we will have to define another function another a div to contain only the icons so we will do it in our next lecture see you in the next lecture oh welcome back once again in this part we will try to add our navbar item so far we have added this uh, image here now here we will have to add our this navbar information icon with the title all right so for that first and foremost i'm gonna add one ul here and after that ul we are gonna have one ally and this ally will contain each and every navbar items so i'm gonna define i'm gonna give a class name to this ally i'm gonna say class name 
I'm gonna say nav item for each nav item. Okay, so we're gonna have a class name called nav item, and inside this li, we will have to show our icon and then our text. Let's say this one is going to be our home, for example. And now we can't see anything. We can see our home, but it's black. We can't see anything here and. We also need to add one icon here so I'm gonna choose this flat color icons from here we will have to import this one so copy this import and put it here and we need to put the icon name so for the home let's put let's search the home icon where is the home icon here it should be some here in this area So I'm not sure if this home icon I got from here or some other, but it should be here. So I'm. What can I do? I here you go. So this is the home icon. So FC home. I'm gonna copy this one, and I will paste it here. So this way you will just need to import this one, or if you're using Font Awesome, then import their icon you can see font awesome you can import this one and then if you want to game icons import then these things you can see it's gonna just this one is gonna change based on that this fast two it is start from zi and you just need to change the gi so this way you can choose any icon from react icons and use this this way but mostly i will use this flat colors icon and i will use all of this icon that i have used here so just for now just design this one so this is our fc home and here I'm gonna inside this alley I'm gonna add this icon and I will give it a size called 25 I will give a size 25 and I don't need to I don't want to make uh, change the color of this one because it's already a colored icon because this flat color icon is already gives color icon so I'm not gonna do it now we can see this icon here and this text is here but it's black we will have to change it how we do it now look at here so we have our navbar items and this navbar items contain a profile picture we are done with this thing we don't need to look on it now after this navbar items we have one ally inside this ally we will have this ally you will ally and each and every ally will contain multiple navbar items so if i copy here one and then if i say here this one is going to be for about then it's gonna add another icon here it's called about okay but we will change the icon later so now we need to add our css for this one so what we have here we have our navbar items and then you will ally and then we have these things okay so first we have we need to go step by step so navbar items then you will ally here let's put the color first so color is going to be white color so now we have white color now we need to remove this dot because it, it's coming from this ally and ul okay so to remove this one we need to add a list style type is going to be none add cursor pointer after that add margin here i'm gonna add a margin here so margin top let's say 30 pixel now we have this design but i want to have a little bit of a space from the icon okay how we do it and this icon is count as sbz icon by default so for that i will have to call this sbz icon as well so how i do it so this navbar ul ally i'm gonna copy this class name here copy this nav ul ally and then add SPC okay and here I'm gonna say margin left 10 pixel and margin right 25 pixel so margin right 25 pixel and then margin left 10 pixel here you go so now we have this little space from the icon and then the text okay like exactly the same way we have and we also have these functionalities when we are in the section based on the section it is going to highlight it but we will do it once we have our 
we will add our react scroll package okay to do this smooth scrolling so now let's add all these functionalities but for that um, I will have to change the icon so first one is about and so how many we have here one two three four five six seven eight so we have eight options here so I'm gonna copy this two and I'm gonna add eight here four six and then eight now we will have to change the name so home about then we have work experience and of course we will also change the icon then take a stock and then we have education section and then we have this project section after that we have this testimonial section sorry we have we need to copy only one it's going to be our testimonial section and then we have our contact section all right so now we have all these options here okay but right now we don't have um, any content here so if I collapse this one we don't have anything okay so now what I want to have I want to I want to have different kind of icons here like this so I already have this icon so what you can do you can just use any icon or you can just simply type my icon name that I am using here so I'm not gonna search it one by one because it's gonna take a lot of time so instead what I will do I will just copy this icon from my previous project you can see uh, import FC and this are the thing these are the few icons that I have used so I'm gonna copy it and then I am gonna paste it here and this one is already here FC home you can see so I'm gonna just remove it here so what I did here so these are the icon name that we have here okay so I'm just not gonna search it now so that our video uh, video doesn't get longer all right so you can just use any icon just copy it and then paste it here okay I already have this one all this icon and this one I'm using for, for different from different uh, one instead of this FC okay so this FC home we already used and then so this one is generating here unnecessary uh, we will do it so now first one is for home and for about which one we have for about we have this icon uh, the about icon I'm gonna choose this uh, contact factory night portrait salesperson so I'm gonna choose this one for FG for sales performance so this is our home for the about I'm gonna choose this icon and let's see what we have here uh, not this one I think we have the other one here so the to do night portrait um, I'm gonna choose this one for the about all right this one yes and then we have our work experience for work experience we have this one sales performance this is our work experience I'm gonna change the icon here this one is generated unnecessary because of the format I'm gonna just quickly remove it and then we after work experience we have this tech stack for this tech stack I think uh, I used this one called uh, MD bio biotech for for the tech stack so I'm gonna change it and here this one is by default I think white color you can see this one is work uh, okay so for work experience we have a different icon not this one so uh, FC contact FC factory FC to do list not the to do list it it is something called work experience and this one is here so I think this one is coming from this one let's put this one for work experience yes this one and then we have take a stack for take a stack we have this but if you want you can change the color so this this one is take a stack so I'm gonna just put color here we can say color is going to be orange so color is going to be orange here 
so we have this orange color now for this tech stack for the education we have this education um factory to-do list sales performance which one i used for the education uh, okay so there is another one that i missed to import called education here so there is another name a icon name called md cast for education it's from react icons md so i'm gonna use this one for the education and for the projects so we need to add this to do list packet to do list icon so for the project i'm gonna use this one and then we have testimonial for testimonial i think have sales performance i added i just added some random icon but if you have any other icons you can just use it all right so this contact testimonial project education sales stock take a stock work experience about and home and we have all this icon here now okay so what i did mainly i just added icon different icon here so from uh from react icons you are feel free to use any icon whatever you prefer all right you just use any icon and copy and paste it here okay so these are the icon that is directly from this react icons okay and now we have these options here and after that we need to say that if it is true then we are showing this one what if we don't have this one for the for the collapse sidebar collapse sidebar we have this only icon so how we do it so here we have added the condition if it is true then show all these uh, sidebar items if not then show this one here i'm gonna add another class name i'm gonna say class name is going to be never i can say here only with icon because here we will only show icon we are not gonna show any text here so for that we can say navbar items navbar items only icons okay so now here i'm gonna copy the same functionalities from here like this one with li and le because these are this ul and li is containing all of our uh, information from there we will just remove the text okay so this li ul and li i'm gonna just copy and then i'm gonna put it still we will have to do little changes here now we will have these things okay we, 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 we still have the text but it's in a very bad condition we are gonna fix it first let me remove the text from here but we need the same icon so i'm gonna remove the text from here And remove this one from testimonial and these things so now we have this icon but it looks really bad we need to add our CSS for this one as well so how we do it so again the same process we need to add this class name here and then we need to add ul ally for this one so never only icon with ally we can say fast uh, for the for the for the icon here so you will ally and then sbg and i'm gonna say margin left so margin left is going to be 10 pixel we want to have little margin okay so added this margin here and after that we need this one also only for this one this evil ally that contain this text and here let's say margin top i want to have margin top 10 pixel after that color put cursor here so cursor is going to be pointer and then list style type none because otherwise it will uh, generate unnecessary dot for us so now we have this design here what is it here 
after this one we have one four five but but we are having this five three eight three three eight okay there is an issue here i think so let me fix it so color warrants one two three so the md biotech and let me see here we don't have this issue here but here we have this issue so we need to fix this one so here we are saying that uh, margin top list is tilted none and now we need to add one more things here so for some reason it is not getting the space so let me check it again so div navbar items only icons and then you will ally so margin top navbar items Number items uh, you will ally you will ally SBG margin left 10 pixel list style type none margin top is going to be 10 pixel here everything is fine let's put the to 30 pixel I think I have added only 10 pixel now it looks good better than previous one but here we have this little after this four we have one more space so this evil ally 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 and then this is the md biotech for education food list nef items so let's uh, refactor this one so why it's coming from so the space is coming extra space coming after this uh, one two and this three one two three and then the four four is which one the biotech after this biotech we have we are getting this we are getting this uh, little space from here so this cache for education this cache for education i think i can refresh this one and it's gonna work all right so we have added this one and which in which one is this one i think let's put this one then we have this issue here and then we have this um for education and then choose this education here all right so this education is not showing for some reason here and this is for i'm going to remove this education then from here now everything is fine it's very weird because we we are using the same thing here but sometimes this react just can't uh, refresh everything so we have three three six and two eight so three three six two eight so if i collapse this one we have this icon if we open then we have this sidebar icon so now uh, another thing is that in this one we need to change the color for this one so this is the color when our edu when our items is uh, open expanded for this education i'm gonna change the color to orange color like this one what do we have here I think it has a uh, yellow color so we have this yellow color and let's put this yellow color here also so all right so we will continue with from our next lecture see you in the next lecture oh welcome back once again in this part we will design our home section all right 
then we will connect this um, we will add this smooth scrolling right now we don't have any section so we can't add this smooth scrolling so there's a reason that I want to have a couple of uh, section then we can implement this smooth scrolling okay because you can see that we don't have any data but our sidebar is already ready okay and we will change it we will connect with our smooth scrolling once we have our home section or one more section ready so if you can remember that previously we were created our home section and this home section is connected with this sidebar in this container all right and, and then now let's design the home bar home section first so inside this home I am gonna create a container fluid first so return and I'm gonna add div and going to add class name here I'm gonna say container fluid and so container fluid and here I'm gonna give it a class name called home now inside this home we will have two things one we will have this theme icon that we will add later not now okay so we will add it just here but we are not gonna look on it so just remember that this home is gonna contain everything whatever we can see here and this container fluid we're using to have full white and inside this home white what we need to add we are gonna have one more container but before that let's add some CSS for this home class so home.css and here it goes so this is our home okay home is connected and here we need to define the height of our section so I'm gonna say the height is going to be 400 pixel after that um, let's add the background color so background color I'm gonna choose the same background color that we have for our sidebar so this background color copy this background color and let's see what we have now at the moment so at the moment we can see this color because it is happening is because is because here if you look at here in our sidebar we said container okay and inside this container we called this home section this home component but even though we added container fluid here still here we have container for this one there's the reason that there's the reason that it is not showing here so let's try to change it to container fluid and now what we have now we have this whole screen color for I mean now we have white for the entire screen so this way you can solve it or you can also give it uh, another name maybe here in the sidebar section you can also add the background color you can try for example um, you can also do it in this way it's totally fine but let's remove this one and then here we have our sidebar section right that we called earlier and then here I'm gonna sh add the background color it's still it will work here you can see we, we're getting double background color now so we don't need to have this one here okay so we can add this one here but from here we can remove this background color and then we will have this one background color it is also gonna work in this way all right so what I did here this home is connected to this container so here you don't need to uh, you don't need to put it uh, put another container fluid here so what uh, what we can do here alternatively just go to this sidebar section just go to this sidebar section because this sidebar section is gonna contain is gonna contain everything with including this home all right so you can just add a background color here we can say sidebar section background color and this sidebar is for our left sidebar for this one this sidebar I mean this sidebar this color is for this sidebar okay so this is how you can add um, this home section color background color 
or you can try it in other ways maybe it's totally fine if you use here container fluid but as you already have one container fluid even if it's, it's not necessary to put it in this container you can also put it normal class here but just keep it container because we want to start our text from here as we will do it from here it is gonna also work so don't get confused here we have this one and for this because inside this home inside this container we have this home component and this sidebar section is contain this entire thing here therefore in this sidebar section I just added the background color and this background color will be for our home section background color all right now inside this one what I will do I can simply add here a color so color is going to be white color not wheat color it should be white color and after that inside this home we will have to add another container uh, we can say div and class name here I'm gonna say container and inside this container this container will contain our all the home content so I'm gonna say home content all right so first I'm gonna have one h1 text and here I'm gonna say hi I'm gonna say hi I am a so like this text but it's coming from it's, it's coming from the top so we need to add our CSS for this home content so I want to put it in the center so how we do it we will have to use so container this is bootstrap class so now put our take our class now which is home content here I'm gonna put the flex box so display I'm gonna say flex here and I'm gonna add flex direction column after that justify content center justify content is going to be center and then margin auto I'm gonna put padding 10 pixel and margin to 100 pixel let's see if what we have now so this one is not directly working here because we need to put here is two sorry is one then it should work okay so I think this thing is not gonna work here or we can put here line height is going to be 400 pixel yes so now it is in the center so this line height you need to put your previous your parent class name which is home and this home we added height 400 pixel so this is how it work you just need to put this line height based on the height that you have assigned for your parent component for your, for your parent div this is the parent div then we have another div so now we have our text here the same way we have it here and now we will have to add our typewriting effect and then these two buttons but we will do it in our next lecture see you in the next lecture oh, welcome back once again in this part we will try to add this typewriting effect okay this cool typewriting effect for that I'm gonna use a package called and called typewriter effect so you just search on Google npm typewriter effect then you are gonna get this um, package name here and then we need to install it so copy this package name here and then open this project directory so I'm gonna say CD so I'm gonna say CD client then hyphen hyphen force and it is gonna install and in the meantime what can we do we can simply have a look on the documentation so they say these are the things that we need to do in order to install this package and then this core and here you can see that they have a couple of props you can simply try each and every props I'm gonna show you a couple of then method then the basic example these are the code 
and these and then this react and alternatively you can choose this one so this is the easiest way to implement so we're gonna use this one so first we'll have to import this one here so I'm gonna copy this one and it is already installed and put it on the top after this ace one I'm gonna put another tag called ace two and inside this ace two we'll have to add in this type writer effect I'm gonna add this one so I'm gonna copy this type writer effect here from here I'm gonna just put it here all right so this type writer effect it has these options and inside these options we have two things one is auto start loop and the string and this string is basically the text that you can see here like one by one is coming so now let's see what we have here okay so we can't see it and what could be the reason so type writer effect okay so let's run it sometimes the react chess cannot run it when you install a new package so cd client and then i'm gonna say npm start and let's see if it works normally it should work or we did something wrong here i think no and we have these things and it can be done from here so i'm gonna close this one for now and let's see what we have here something is running on port number 300 so I'm gonna press yes and if you don't want to install the package you can also use their CDN link just put it in the um, in in the index.html file the way we did it for bootstrap but it's better to use this npm install then it is gonna work so our development server has started and we should be able to see our result here you go so it is loading still and it's gonna come is there anything wrong in our uh, console so everything is fine but sometimes it takes a lot of time to do it and after this one we will have to add two more button one is for this hire me button when you click on it it connect to this contact form and then the button to download the resume okay i will show you how to do it let's uh, complete this type writer effect here first and here you go so all right so here is our project but uh, we can't see our type writing effect and what could be the reason here so i think we need to fix something here because uh, in the home.css we added this one for this particular item so let's uh, remove this one this line height from here and here you go we can see our type writing effect hello world but we need to fix it so instead of this line height it is not gonna work in this way because it's not getting enough space so I will have to make changes here rather I'm gonna add margin top so from margin top I'm gonna add 100 pixel and so not for this ace one I'm gonna add this for this entire content so it's going to be for home content and inside this home content we have this so display flex uh, column center margin auto padding 10 pixel and margin top 100 pixel and then 
here in the home let's put position relative so position is going to be relative here now here is here you go we have this hi i am this is the content so we will fix it and before that so we have this home content and then this is two. so this home content and then i'm gonna put this home content and this is two here i'm gonna add margin top 20 pixel and let's change the color to white color so now we can see so we need to make some changes in our design to put it in the center okay so what can we do here so display flex and all this so instead this margin top it should be after this padding here and then we can see it is in the center i think uh we can remove all this item here we don't need to have this one because we are just using margin to put it center because we have these multiple items and remove this position relatives from here as well because we don't need it anymore so now we have this text and here we will have to add all this information like digital marketing like whatever text you want to add here so in inside this i am gonna add a couple of skills that i have so i'm gonna say i am a full stack software developer i'm gonna say full stack software developer and then i'm gonna say marn stack and then just add your basic skill whatever you have and then i'm gonna say web developer i'm gonna say ui ux designer gonna say backend so web developer ui ux designer and then so full stack software developer marn stack web developer um uh ui ux designer marn stack developer i'm gonna say marn stack developer ui ux designer so these are the four things that i'm gonna add So designer so now let me explain you one more time what I did basically I don't get confused here so this is our home content this home content is gonna contain all this design part so here I just added this home content and added this uh, I think I don't need to have this margin this little design pairing 10 pixel and margin top 100 pixel and margin top 100 pixel okay so that we can see this uh, little thing here but if you want you can also change the color for example and then added this margin home content is two so this home content is two so this home content is two means this is two this text this one is gonna this is two is gonna contain our typewriter effect so s2 and then add if you want you can add a little more margin here let's say 30 pixel then you get a little more margin here from the top and if you want you can also change the background color of this one i mean the font color of the text so let's choose this one i can say I'm a full stack software developer and then this Marn stack developer okay these are the thing and there is another property here called you can see they have a couple of property for example if you want to add a delay property like for for example this delay like once it's finished if you want to stay it for a couple of seconds then you can choose there this delay property like delay so i'm gonna choose this delay property here in this driver effect after this loop i'm gonna say delay and this delay is going to be let's say five and then it's gonna wait and then this way it's gonna work okay so we can see that i think we can change it because we, we are not able to see much more difference so i'm gonna do it to ace three and we need to change it here as well so s3 okay so now i think it looks good 
minus stack developer and these are th two things so you have learned how to add this tributary effect so it's very easy to install very easy to use just install this package and here import this typewriter and then just wrap it with any kind of tag or div and then this options is going to contain everything and then this strings is your uh, string your information that you want to show in the type writing effect and this auto is that true if you want you can false if you if you don't want to loop through then you can just make it false then it is not gonna loop again once it's finished it is gonna finish it is not gonna show it again okay so we have four options one is gonna uh, show you the four options after that it is not gonna uh, repeat it again I think uh, yeah this is our last one which is UI UX designer and then you can see that it has stopped there isn't any loop through so we need to make it to true so that it can continuously start typing okay now it is gonna work all right so now after that we have two button one is for this and one is for get resume and we will do it in our next lecture see you in the next lecture oh welcome back once again in this part we will try to implement this to button all right and most probably the download features as well all right so let's try to add this one so after this h3 tag we will have to add another class okay if you look at here then you can see that we have two button here all right so i'm gonna add one div that will contain this two button so div and inside this div let's add a class name we can say button for action just for an example or you can say two buttons name i'm gonna say button for action so this is our home.css and here i'm gonna add so here we will have to add display flex so this place is going to be flex because we are going to have two button one after another one and inside this class name i'm going to create two div so this div will contain this hire me text hire me and then another div that will contain get resume me so it is going to take get resume me And let's see what we have now here so we can see hire me and get resume one after another but it looks really bad now we will have to add our CSS design to solve this problem so how we will do it so first and foremost let's design the hire me button this text okay so I'm gonna give it a class name called I can say hire me button just give a meaningful name and I'm gonna add all this CSS property so this hire me button is gonna have a background color first so add a background color so I'm gonna choose a background color and the color code is double F 8546 oh see this is the color code and now let's see what we have here so we can see this little background color but we need to add all the design properties for example add text align center I want to have the text in the center of the button then define the white I'm gonna select 180 pixel and then pairing I'm gonna choose 10 pixel and here you go it looks good now our text is in text is in, in center after that what can I do I'm gonna add a border radius is 90 pixel this border radius gives us this chef this round chef this round shape cool and then we have this hover effect as well that we will have to add so border radius 90 pixel then I'm gonna add cursor pointer here let's add a little bit of margin from top so add margin top so margin top is going to be 10 pixel and then let's put a little border here 
so border I'm gonna say two pixels solid I'm gonna say yellow so now we have this one and if I want if you want we can also change the font size I think let's put it 20 pixel and what we have here we don't have this font size okay so instead of 20 pixel I'm gonna decrease it to uh, 17 pixel and then I'm gonna add a font family here so this font family is going to be this one all right so now we need to add little hover effect so for this button I'm gonna add a hover effect so this button colon this hover and here I will have to add background color I'm gonna change the background color to white color and then when we hover I want to increase the white of this one so white 250 pixel normally the white is 180 pixel as soon as we hover it I'm gonna increase it to 250 pixel and then okay, let's see what we have now we can see uh, this hover effect and we need to change the color of this item when you hover so when you hover we want to have color color black and but what it has it is black color but um, here you can see that we have this little kind of animation effect it's not exactly animation effect it calls transition duration so transition duration I'm gonna keep to put it two second now we, we will have this and you can see this nice animation and not exactly animation just little transition that we have here okay I think instead of two second let's put it one second cool so now we need similar design for another button so I'm gonna add a give it give it a class name I'm gonna say uh, get resume button All right so instead in for this get resume button I will need the similar design so I'm gonna copy the same CSS property but I will change the background color so you can see we have this one but for that we have this we have this different color so I'm gonna choose this for yellow I think this is the yellow color it's not exactly the yellow color okay we can keep this one yellow color and one thing that I want to have margin left so put margin left 10 pixel and to want to have this kind of uh, hover effect also so I'm gonna copy this class name this class name clone hover and when you hover I want to have these same properties but with maybe with a different kind of color so when I hover I can see this get resume okay but when I hover here we have a different color so I'm gonna change the background color to something like this color just a random color we have this color but um, instead of this yellow let's say green yellow So we have this hover effect what color it is so we can try some other colors I think maybe this color or this color let's try this color so I'm gonna copy this color code and I'm gonna put it here instead of and let's see how it looks so it looks like this 
it looks really bad so this border color is also looking bad so I'm gonna keep it change the border color to white for this item so this border color is going to be white and for this one I'm gonna choose orange art color and we have this get resume and then this hire me for this one also change the border color to white color cool it looks really good but here we have different color but it's totally fine we can just keep this one so now when I click on this get resume we should download our uh, no, I should download our CV right so how we add this functionality it's very easy to do it so inside the home just put your PDF version of your CV okay so I'm gonna put my CV here so I'm gonna just drag and drop my CV inside this image folder it's inside this home folder because we're in the home directory you can put it anywhere okay but if you open it here you won't see anything in this way but you don't need to do it so just put your CV in this directory or any other directory and then call it in the home so I'm gonna say import I'm gonna say my CV and put the direction of the CV so from CV dot PDF okay now here in the get resume we will have to add our um, a tag okay anchor tag I'm gonna wrap this get resume text using this anchor tag so I'm gonna add a tag and then put this one inside this a tag and then here I'm gonna add href and this href is going to be our directory of our CV our directory is here that we created is going to be my CV here and then HTML has a property called download so uh, we're gonna use this download property and here if you want you can uh, change you can give a name we can say that your name for example I'm gonna say yes Tani underscore CV so this, this this will be the name when your when anyone will download your CV from the website okay otherwise it will generate a random name now if we come here then we will be able to see this thing is happened here because we use the anchor tag but we will solve it don't worry now if I click on this get resume it should download our resume all right and let's wait here you go but here you can see it's failed exactly actually it's not failed because because of this um, this local version is showing it in this fail way but if you have other option here then you can see you can download this one you can see download completed using the download manager but it will work for example uh, when we deploy it this link is gonna work so this is the way to do it so if I click on the open link then here you go this is the CV that I just downloaded for example this is the live version in Netlify now if I click on the get resume then you will see that it is gonna download and it has downloaded and is automatically opened the CV in my browser okay so it is working and this is the way don't worry it will work click on it but here it will show the fail because of this Google Chrome and if you if you have download manager or any other but when you deploy it maybe for 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 your browser you will be able to see download it but for me it's working in this way but don't worry this is the way to download the resume okay it's fully working it's fully functional so now we need to add we need to change this color of this one because it's coming because of this anchor tag so now we have this anchor tag inside this get resume so I'm gonna say get resume here I'm gonna say get resume and then this anchor tag I'm gonna say um, text decoration none and this text decoration none means this underline is gonna remove okay now we don't have any underline so we have this color now change the color to a black color that we had earlier 
now it should work okay get resume and hire me and get resume okay if i click on it we can see you can download our cv actually uh, it's, it's it's gonna download uh, the pdf but here i think i did a mistake here it's showing this um dot txt file but i forgot to mention the file type here and here my cv dot pdf you need to write okay then only you can download the pdf otherwise it will generate the text file so now if i download it click on it you can see this cv dot pdf click on it open it now you will see this this is the pdf that i just downloaded from here okay but here now it's, it's showing fail but it is not exactly failed it is gonna work when you deploy it maybe for your browser it is gonna work automatically you can see the cb name and the, the, the pdf it will show exactly the same name here all right so we can try to add this one in this way and everything is fine so you have learned how to add this cv and how to download the cv how to download the resume and we will continue working from our next lecture see you in the next lecture oh, welcome back once again in this part we will try to implement our about section so far we have finished this home section and then let's get started working on it so i can see some spelling mistake here so this is our project where we are working so open the home i think i did some spelling mistake it's called designer all right so now inside this component fold directory i'm gonna create another folder called about folder so i'm gonna say about dot js us oh, it should be only about not about dot js because it's our it's just our folder so about inside this about i'm gonna add about dot js and we need another file for our css so i'm gonna create another file for css and it's going to be dot css so now we have our about file and about dot css files so first create this function here in the about and then i'm gonna import our about dot css here so about dot so about dot css and now we need to connect our about in our home sec in our app.js file so i'm gonna import our about in this app.js so after the sidebar i'm gonna put this about here all right now we should be able to see our text here somewhere here you can see the about but it should come from the container so we will make the required changes here so now uh, here we need to define our container so div is going to be a class name i'm going to add a class name and inside this class name let's define our container so this container and then i'm going to define a section name here i'm going to say about section okay and inside this about section we are going to have two column in one row one is for this image and another one is for this text and this title so for that i'm gonna create i'm gonna define a row here i'm gonna say div class name is going to be row and then i'm gonna add the class name i'm gonna say div and here div is going to be class name is going to be call excel 6 call excel 6 and then i'm gonna say call lg6 call excel 6 so in the large screen i'm gonna have 6 and then actually i can copy this one and then change it for medium and then for our small size so in the medium i'm gonna have this okay so let's put it 12 for medium and for a small size let's put it 12 as well we need one more for our title and here i'm gonna add so first let's put the image here 
So to put the image, I'm gonna add uh, another div. Inside the div, I will put the image. So I'm gonna say div class name is going to be about image. And inside this about image, I'm gonna add our image tag to show the image. So we have our image in our image for directory. So I'm gonna import this one. So I'm gonna say import. I'm gonna say profile pic from and put the directory. It's going to be images and our file name is what is it? It's a.jpg. So a dot jpc and this is going to be profile pic and here you go so I need to add this source and here i'm gonna add these things this profile pic now we should be able to see our profile pic here we can see but uh, we should make some uh, we should add some de css design here and let's add the ultra if in case we can't load the image then in that case we're gonna show uh, text here i'm gonna say profile image profile photo and here now we need to add the css for this image so I'm, we're gonna copy this one so about image and okay so let's put it here so about then the image tag and here we need to add our css for this image so um, let's define the height and white for this one first. So I'm going to define a height 400 pixel and the white is going to be 400 pixel and then I'm gonna add border radius. So border radius is going to be 90 pixel and what do we have now? So now okay so we need to put it 190 pixel to make it circle and let's add a little margin here i'm gonna add margin top i think 10 pixel sorry let's put it 50 pixel okay so now uh, i'm gonna add a border here so that we can identify it so border is going to be um we can say five pixel solid yellow and here you go so now it looks like this we don't have this border here and another thing is that i want to have a section with this shadow then i'm gonna have this one so how we do it here we have defined this about section right so i'm gonna copy this about section first and on the top let's put this design here so about section and inside this about section we can define our um box shadow or whatever we want to have so how we generate our box shadow to generate our box shadow you can simply search on google we can say box shadow generator and you will be able to see a couple of websites where you can generate or you can manually type okay just random you can see you can customize this one this way it will look like this it will look like this you can this way there are so many uh, websites you can just choose which one you can just choose any of this and this or this okay so i'm just for example let's copy this one but i do have my own box shadow that i'm gonna use it i'm just showing you how to do it now we should see this kind of box shadow all right but i'm not gonna use this one i have my own box shadow that i generated previously so I'm gonna just copy my uh, box shadow that I love to have. So these are the box shadow. So I'm gonna just copy it. And if if you don't have, I mean, you will not have this code as it's in only in my site. So you can simply uh, type this one if you want to have this, or you can just copy uh, any random from this or from any of this website and then just use it. All right, so now if I save it, and here you go I can see this box shadow now I want to have a little margin from the top section so for that in this about section let's put little margin I'm gonna say margin top let's put 50 pixel I think and here you go we have this little margin here and for this image what can we do 
uh, let's add um little padding padding 50 pixel so that we get a little bit of a space from the bottom and top and right uh, okay so we cannot add here padding padding means the inner space so let's change it to margin so margin 50 pixel all right so now we have this kind of shape but we will change it if it is required and now first let's add our text here so for the text we need to have let's define another uh, class name here another div inside the div we can say about details this this div is going to contain our title and the description so for that i'm going to define a title here i can say about title here about details and inside this about details we will have two things one is our paragraph which is our this text that we have here i'm going to copy this text just for an example but if you want you can use information about you i'm just using some dummy text okay so we're passing this paragraph here now what do we have so now we have this paragraph text here and it should start from from the same way like we added a uh, margin top 50 pixel so for that we should also add like let's copy the, the class first about details and i'm gonna put it after the image here say about details and add margin top of 50 pixel like the same so that it is start from the same position okay from the same positions now we need to have our title so therefore inside this about details i'm gonna define another div and this div will contain our title and our uh the underline so i can i'm gonna say class name i can say about title and here i'm gonna put ace5 tag and in this ace5 tag i'm gonna say about me and let's add the css because we need to put it in the center and i'm gonna say about me here uh not this one we need to copy the class which is going to be about title so about title and then we need to have the tag that we're using it's called ace5 and here we can just put text align center and or We just need to put it in the center so the text align center is gonna work in that case yes so it is in center now we need to have this um uh, this this underline so how we add it to add this underline i'm gonna put one span tag here not the sp I'm gonna add, I'm gonna use this span tag and in, in this span tag I'm gonna give it a name and it's going to be a class name is going to be line and I don't we don't need to add any value here we're just gonna add CSS here and here uh, we need to add all the CSS properties so I'm gonna add a display display is going to be block and then um white is going to be uh let's put it 70 pixel for example and then height is going to be 3 pixel and i'm gonna put margin 1 pixel auto and then add our background color um, let's choose yellow and how it looks so here you go so now it is in the center just after this one and we have this but this uh, yellow is not looking good here let's put yellow green all right so I'm gonna I'm gonna take this one and now how it will look in a responsive mood okay so we will fix it now it's not responsive okay don't worry we're gonna make it responsive i just wanted to see these two portion so this image is responsive 
and also this one is also responsive okay but uh, we have added I think we can decrease the uh, height and width of this image so instead of 400 just put it 300 300 by 300 pixels yeah now it looks good all right so our about section is done and another thing that another mistake i think i did or or it's from the same size okay so i think i have added one margin here 50 pixel i was talking about this one i'm gonna cut this one and then we can see these things and what about this one uh, we have this bigger size okay so we can define the height also we can define the height of this section so let's define the height of this section so height let's say 600 pixel in the about section so now we have this uh, this mass of a space so not 600 let's put it 400 pixel okay then it will look like this I think it looks good similar to this one or we can add little more maybe 500 pixel whatever you want you can just randomly choose it whatever it looks good okay so it looks good now so we have finished our about section and this about section is working so we have this about we have this image and this one is also working here okay so in the next part we will try to implement some other things so see you in the next lecture welcome back once again in this part uh, we will try to implement our this section and after that we will try to implement this section okay so let's complete this section first so it calls the take a stack section and here what we have we have this item and then we hover we get this animation we get this uh, different color when we have this box shadow and another interesting feature is that uh, the first item is gonna be always marked and then random color as well so you're gonna learn these are the few technique in react JS. so for that let's create another file another folder for take a stack inside this components directory so I'm gonna say take a stack and inside this take, take a stack I'm gonna create another um, I'm gonna create a file here JS file I'm gonna say take a stack dot CSS okay so let's uh, create this file and here I'm gonna put this import and the CSS file so take a stack dot CSS now we need to connect it with our app dot JS file so add this one in our app dot JS so import take a stack and then this take a stack we need to put here all right so in this take a stack first create our container here so add class name class name is going to be container and then we will have to add two things first we need to add a section title i mean this title so i'm gonna call it section title so that we can reuse it for other components for example for this one we also have this title for the education we have this title for the projects we have this title okay so i'm gonna call it section title so define a div and then the class name is going to be I can say section title I'm gonna put our h5 text here I'm gonna say it take a stack and we should be able to see our this take a stack but it's, it's coming from here but it should be from outside I mean it should be inside the center and we also need to have a container we need to define a section here but we will do it so here and then I'm gonna define the same I think we have this um, we, we, we added this one right in our about we have this span tag I think like this line tag I think it is gonna automatically connect here as we have this 
same thing. So let's see if it is gonna work. No, it is not gonna work here. Or we can't see it. Okay, so let's put it first in the center. So the section title. Let's take this section title in the tech stack CSS. And then the section title is going to be so we need to put it in the center right so I'm gonna say section title and then going to be s5 and here I'm gonna say text align center text align center so our text align is center and we can also see the line but the reason is that we are not able to see it because of this um, we don't have enough space here so I'm gonna Give, I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna say take take a stack section and just for now, just for example, I'm gonna let's add margin top. So margin top. Let's put it forty pixel and define a height. Height is going to be let's say. 800 pixel we will not define the fixed height so you can see this underline is appeared here like the same and we have this option but we are not gonna define the height fixed height because we will have multiple items here you can see we have multiple items so I'm gonna say height is going to be auto here cool so now we have this tech stack and I'm gonna add I'm gonna divide it so we will have to add our row here and then we need to look through our data that we want to show. So I'm gonna, after this one, I'm gonna have a div and inside the div, I'm gonna define the class name is going to be row. And then here we need to add our data, okay? Uh, I mean, we need to do the math through to show all of this data. But for that, first let's create our API like the fake API that I call it JSON API so I'm gonna say const data here we are gonna generate we're gonna design our API so how we do it like here and I'm gonna say the name I'm gonna say um, node.js okay let's put it um, full stack developer And then I'm gonna just add so as your skill like your tech stack that you have maybe you are a uh, front-end developer back-end developer react.js Vue.js developer whatever so I'm gonna just add some random name like so full -stack developer and then node.js then two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14. I'm adding a lot of because we will add this load more pagination. If you look at here, you see that we have this lot more pagination. So it, this is another interesting thing here. You're going to learn that there's a reason that I'm adding a lot of tag stuff so that uh, we can show our this pagination. Okay. So now let's change it. So Node.js. Then I'm gonna say React.js. Then view, then view JS, then express JS, then view JS, and then um, what else we have? Nux JS, and then Angular JS, then Angular JS, and then um. Vanilla JS. Let's put it here. JavaScript. And then no, then TypeScript. TypeScript, and then I'm gonna say Python. I'm gonna say Python, and then I'm gonna say Python. And what else we can add here? We can say Django. So 
Django and and then here I'm gonna say um, UI UX All right, so this is our uh, fake API. Now you can assume that, like, when you get an get data from an API endpoint, then you get a JSON array mainly. In JSON API we call it RESTful API. So normally you get data in this way, and then you just show it in your application. So how we do it? So now we have this data here. So now I'm gonna add here. I'm gonna loop through. I'm gonna add map for this one. So this data contains our uh, all of our JSON data that we just created and I'm gonna say map and then here I'm gonna add item let's define give it a position index and then bracket here and then here I'm gonna define a div and here we are gonna define our uh, column okay so I'm gonna divide it into four so how we have it here like three so I'm gonna divide it into uh, four Okay, so I'm gonna divide it class name is going to be call Excel We have three here or four we have three okay, so we need to define it four and then I'm gonna Copy it four three okay, so in extra large screen it will show four in large screen we will show four in medium scale we will show we will show two so i'm gonna give it six but in a small screen which is going to be this screen uh, we want to show only one so i'm gonna divide it 12 okay so now if i just for example if i just show how now how i get the information of this one you can see this our property name is name so i can get it here this way so item dot this name so now we should be able to see all this name here from our API you can see full stack developer node.js express.js all this but it looks really bad now we need to have and this kind of design and how we do it to add this kind of chef we need to define a class name here a div here so I'm gonna add a div here and add this class name here and then I'm gonna say tag content so tag content and inside the tag content I will have this name okay so p item dot name I'm gonna put it inside this one now we have this tag content but still we won't see any changes here now let's add css for this tag content so first add a box shadow for this tag content so this tag content now i want to have the same box shadow that i added previously so i want to have box shadow from the like this box shadow that i used so you can use your box shadow or you can generate new one for this one so let's put this box shadow here and let's see what we have now so now we can see this box shadow so i want to have a little bit more design here so um, i want to have padding here so add padding 10 pixel and then add color i'm gonna choose color is going to be black and then margin let's add let's see what we have now so now we have this it looks like this so uh, let's add margin top 50 pixel so margin top 50 pixels so that we have a little bit more space here it goes so now we have this more space now we need to put this text in the center like this in the center so how we do it to do so we have our text in this p tag right so now what can i say this tag content and this p and here i can add this one so i'm gonna add text align center and then i'm gonna add padding from top 
let's put padding of 30 pixel and then I'm gonna put font size here so font size is going to be 20 pixel and I want to have a font family for this one so I'm gonna choose this one Franklin and here you go so now it look like this so we have this font size we have this color block and our text is now in center all right so let's add one more features here so let's add the hover section here so when we hover the tech content we want to change the background color of this one so how we do it so this tech content when we hover we want to change a background color so tech content is going to be hover and for that we want to have a background color so I'm gonna choose the background color for this one let's say a background color is going to be I am gonna choose hash ff85 for see you can choose any background color whatever you prefer so now I hover it it looks like this but it doesn't look good at all so when I hover I also want to change the color to white so let's change the color to white color to uh, white and then let's put cursor pointer and color white but you can see that it looks really bad like it is showing this shadow instantly so I want to have this kind of things you can also see that the shadow is gonna change so I'm gonna use a different shadow for this one and I want to add little transition here so it calls the transition duration so transition duration is going to be um, I'm gonna choose transition duration one second so this transition duration is kind of this you can see now this it looks better than the previous one but I want to have a different box shadow when I hover and I have this box shadow as well so when I hover I am gonna show the tech is stuck CSS where is it so when I hover I want to show this box shadow okay so for you you can use a different box shadow you want or you can simply type this one it doesn't make any sense to write it okay this box shadow so this box shadow will give us this kind of shadow you can see a little dark now I have exactly the same result and this little transition and our color is gonna change when we hover our item all right so now you we have this option here but we need to add some other things here this number and this random color that we will do in our next part see you in the next lecture oh, welcome back once again in this part we will try to add uh, this uh, this random color with this with this number okay so to do so first we need to create our color okay so I'm gonna create a I'm gonna create a create an array of color okay so here we just need to put our color code so I'm gonna say const colors is going to be here and then in here just need to put the color code okay for example color code this and this like I don't know the color code now here like we can just generate a couple of color code we can just pick some color code from here okay so where is the color code I used we just need to copy uh, the hexa color code that we normally have we can simply search on Google we can say color code so we can just generate some random color code and then I can just put it inside the array so you can see that so these are the color code that we have so I was talking about this color code okay so whatever color you want to show you just put put it here like one color code and then then you copy some other color code maybe this one I'm gonna choose and then I'm gonna choose this one then maybe this one just some random color code and uh, we have data I think how many data we have here we have 3 6 9 12 and then 13 12 13 14 15 we have 15 so let's put 15 color code so you can just pick any random color code whatever you prefer I'm gonna just pick 
this so and then from here I can pick a couple of others I can choose this one or maybe in this maroon color actually I can copy the color code that I already have so I can just copy this color code from my previous project that I built already so I'm gonna copy all this color code here and then I'm gonna paste it here okay so now I have 3, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 okay so now I have 15 uh, color code for 15 items so just pick uh, select color code uh, based on the number of item you have here okay so then it is gonna then we're gonna show a uh, different color for each and every items now we have this color code in this area right now we need to define our function here inside this tech content we need to define uh, another div and this div will be our uh, not div we can just do it inside a uh, span tag so I'm gonna add a span tag here and inside this span tag we can just put our position so how we get our position so index so another thing I forgot to add it here we need to pass the key otherwise it is gonna give us a soft error because react expect to have a unique key for each and every item for example this item should have a unique key this one should have a unique key this one should have a unique key now if I inspect it you should be able to see there is a soft mess there is a warning you can see that each child in a list should have a unique key so it expect a unique key so we will have to give it so this index position is our unique key here so I can just pass this one and here now I'm gonna also show the index now if I show the index then let's see what we have we can see that zero number position one two three four five six and then 14 as you already know that add a count from zero so it's gonna start from here so we want to have it from one okay we don't want to show zero to our user okay so I'm gonna say index plus one then it's gonna count one okay now we have these 15 items but I want to have it in the center and how I do it so let's give it a class name so I'm gonna say class name is going to be um, it's going to be so we can say uh, tech number okay so now this tech number we will have to add the design okay so how we do it So now what can I do here we need to add this uh, border radius here so I'm gonna add border radius 90 pixel and then I'm gonna say height is going to be 50 pixel so put white is going to be 50 pixel and let's see what we have now okay we won't be able to see anything because we didn't add any color here and then I'm gonna choose uh, okay so let's put the color first so that we can understand exactly what we are doing so go to this tech stack now I wanted to change the this color of this tag because this is one tag contain this information this ID okay one two so here I'm gonna add a class here so uh, maybe you already know that uh, if in case you don't know then in react.js we can also write inline css using this style prop so this style and add double bracket here and inside this you can write the css property so i'm gonna say background color and we don't want to show here any hard-coded background color we want to show our array of background color that we have created which is this color so i'm gonna say colors and then inside this we want to pass the position which is our index position and based on this index position it is gonna pick all this color one by one for index position 0 it will show this one for 1 it will show this one so what we said here is style this is style props we use to add inline CSS here and here we are saying that background color 
and then this color array and then we're passing this position now we should be able to see something here you can see that we have different color but it's not visible properly right now we will have to add the changes uh, add the required design so now so we have our height white let's put color here color is going to be white color and then mm, I'm gonna put a uh, text align center and then justify content center put align item center first and then justify content center I'm gonna say display block here and we need, but if I now we can see these things but our text is not in the center yet so what we need to do let's put it margin 0 auto and we I think we need to put a line height here to show it in the middle so line height is the same height that we defined for this one which is 50 pixel this height we need to put then it's gonna add in the center you can see that now our data is in the center all right so it looks really nice okay what happened here we can't see uh, this color I think uh, okay so we are out of color code let's put it let's put one more color code from from bottom here let's put two and now we should be able to see okay you can see that this one but it both are red here I was expecting to a different color but it it's the same color color code that I we have here okay we will change the color code later but now it looks like this so we have this color code here and everything is fine it looks good so we have done this one but let's change a couple of color codes so one two three and then the four I'm gonna change the four no fourth one so for the fourth one I'm gonna choose this color code so the position four I'm gonna choose this color code so one two three four I'm gonna replace this one by this now we have this color code here and I am gonna also remove this one because it doesn't look good here uh, let's I'm gonna add different color code let's put this one so this one is going to be after this color code I'm just adding some a new color code okay so now it looks good and I just want to change this to like this for this three and then I'm gonna choose maybe this one for any of these three let's put it for the third one and then it looks good now and one more color for we can choose some other part maybe we can choose the silver color or this this color for the second one uh, okay it looks really bad so it's not visible maybe no we already choose we already selected the magenta one then I will choose this one this shadow just replace this using this one all right so we have all this color code here I think it would be nice if we use a deep color code here maybe this one for the second one so this way you can just use random color and you can just put it there okay now it looks really nice and we have unique color for each and every item we did this hover effect and everything is fine working and I hope you have learned it now if I do it 
for um, this way, then what do we see? Uh, we can see these options here. Okay, so I think, uh, yeah, but it is, you can see that in a small device, we have this four, but we will fix this, this uh, issue. Now just look at this one. In the medium screen, we have this two. And as soon as I'm in the, on the small screen, we have this one, but we will fix this responsive issue as well. Nothing to worry. So you have learned how to add this tag stack. Now in the next part, I'm going to show you how can we add this lot more pagination. So see you in the next lecture. Oh, welcome back once again. In this part, we will implement this lot more functionalities. All right. So how we will do it? It's very easy to do it. Nothing to worry. So I will try my best to explain it. So now first design the lot more button. So this is our row and this row is going to contain all this uh, data. But after this row, I want to have another button, which is going to be our lot more button. For that, I'm going to add a span tag here. And in this span tag, I'm going to say lot more. And I'm going to define a class name here. I'm going to say class name lot more tech stack. So lot more tech stack. And let's design this one. So what we can see here, let's see, we can see only this uh, text now. So now I'm gonna have a design for this one. So this tech is stuck. Okay, so we need to copy this one first. This tech is stuck here. So now we need to add our CSS for this one. First, I'm gonna define, I'm gonna give it a background color. So add a background color let's say um, yellow I will change it later if it is required and then I'm gonna define it in the white I'm gonna say 150 pixel and then add padding 10 pixel and then I'm gonna choose color color is going to be white and after that text align center and then justify content center justify content is going to be center and then um, let's see what we have now. So now we have our text in this way. It looks really bad with this yellow color. At least I can choose the tomato color. Okay, so now we have this um, we have this button, but we should put it in the center. So how we do it? So for that, so justify content I have added. Now let's define the display table. And then add margin left auto and margin right auto and margin right auto and after that um, I'm gonna put I'm gonna have a margin of 35 pixel now it should be in the center cool it is in the center okay now I'm gonna add little border radius here so add a border radius maybe 5 pixel and then I want to have margin from bottom let's say 40 pixel so that we can see it properly okay so now it looks really good this lot more button and here we go lot more button so margin from bottom and then we need to add cursor pointer so that we can see this hand symbol okay cool so now we have this hand symbol, we have our button, but it is not gonna work right now because we haven't added any kind of functionality. So we just designed our button. Now let's add the functionalities for this one. So how we will do it, first we will have to define a state here. Okay, so take a stack. So now look at here, look at this. Uh, structure of our project here our data contain all of our data and this data contain all of our data and we just did loops through data.mev and we are getting we're saying that whatever data whatever JSON data we have in this data array we are gonna loop through it everything okay but now we need to change it a little bit we will say that at first we will show maybe 9 10 or whatever you want and as soon as user click on the load more button, we are gonna uh, load three more, okay? So we will have to slice our 
array here. So first define the state. So how we do it? So we need to add this use state. Okay, so this use state. And here I'm gonna have these things. I'm gonna say const. And in this const, I'm gonna say, uh, what we can say? We can say, we can say, show more, maybe, or we can say load more. We can say show more tag stack set show more tag. Yes, I just give it a meaningful name. And then by default, initially I want to show nine post here. All right. And nine post here. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna add one. Uh, arrow function here so I'm gonna say const we can say load more and then here just define the arrow function so here I'm gonna say this one it is gonna take all of our data here so this set visible and here I'm gonna pass a state called previous just give it a previous or give it any name it's going to be a our previous plus three plus three or two whatever you want so let me explain you what does it means so as i said that initially we want to show nine posts so there's a reason that i have added nine in this user state and how this user state work in this user state we pass two things one is set one is normal one we set our data or any kind of condition in this set and then we access this information using this one okay so here i'm saying that set show more tag stack here i'm passing a arrow function in one line saying that previous previous plus three so this one knows that previously it has nine post it is allowed to show nine post previously okay because here i have added nine here so previously it is allowed to show nine post there's a reason here I'm saying that previous so this previous I'm passing here in this arrow function means that take the previous state okay in previous state we have nine and now I'm saying that whatever we have in our previous state add three more there's a reason I'm saying that previous plus three so when user will click on this lot more function in this lot more button user will see previous nine plus another new three now they will say 12 again they click on the button they see another three because our then our state is gonna update when they first time click it will become then 12 and then they will say they will see they will see so when second time they click on the load more button they will see 12 plus 3 15 so this is how this um, this one is gonna work so previously we have nine and here we are saying that whatever we have in our previous state just add three more now we need to slice our data here so instead of showing all of the data i am gonna add here i'm gonna say data dot so data dot slice again this slice is coming from the javascript in this slice we basically divide our array so here i'm gonna say slice zero comma to this one so slice our data here i'm saying that whatever array data we have how many data we have we don't care about it now here we're gonna say that we need to slide the slice the array from zero to this state which is nine and then we're just doing this math through as usual now we should be able to see only nine post here let me refresh it and here you go we can see here now three three six nine Oh, we didn't add our anything any functionalities in this load more button here now let me change it to two for example now we should be able to see only two post now we have only two po two post i hope you you got the point here okay understand it again carefully let me explain you initially we will define a number of posts we want to say we want to show let's say six or nine and here we are passing a lot more function arrow function and saying that set more text take the previous one previously we have nine and then show another three you can change it to one 
output to whatever you want okay and now here when we are doing map through i am saying that slice our array which contains our json data how it will slice it will slice based on the state in this state initially it is 9 okay so show it 0 to this state which is 9 and then we're gonna map through and when user will click on it we will show more post now I'm gonna add a on click here in this load mode so I'm gonna add this on click and inside this on click I'm gonna pass this function just this function and now we have 9 by default let me click and we have another 3 now click on it now we have another 3 now click on it nothing is gonna happen because we have reached to the last part last part means I mean the last position because we have only 15 post 15 take stack post here now it should be visible so that user understand that they have reached to the last position and how we do it so when they are in the last position we want to hide the load more but you can see that there isn't any more load more when user is in the last position so let me refresh it again and click on the load more click on the load more click on the load more now this load more button has gone so how we add this one it's very easy to do it so here you can now understand that this one is contain all the information how many state we have how many uh, data we will have in our state this one contain as i told you that in react uses to the work so we set um the, the data here and then we access the data using this one so here i can add a condition in a ternary operator here i can say that this visual this show more tag stack is greater than or equal to our data which is our json array dot length here i'm saying that this show more tag stack greater than or equal to data dot length either it is greater than or equal to data dot length it means that the data we have in our json array is equal to this one then we show null i'm gonna add a ternary operator then i'm gonna sh show null else i want to show this button which is our this spawn button all right so let me explain you one more time if you don't understand here i'm saying that this show more tag stack get at then or equal data dot land it means that this one initially has nine and if it reaches to the length of the data of our array then we are not gonna show anything there's a reason i'm passing here null again let me explain you so this show more tag stack at the beginning contain nine as soon as user click on it we show another three nine plus three okay then we show another three so as soon as it reach it it reaches the last position then here we are saying that get up then or equal data dot length data dot length means if it reached to the to the length of the data for example it has 15 15 data 15 json data if it shows the 15 data then we are showing null is we're going to show the load more it means that still there are some posts that need to be that need to be shown here you can see that the button has been gone now refresh this one again and this 3369 click on the load more button we have another we have another nine okay so this is how it's gonna work so this button has removed as soon as we reach to the last part so load more this load more and it's nothing so i think we need to add little css little margin here from the content so this tech content is gonna hold our entire information okay so not this one i think the section in the section i can add margin from bottom also margin bottom let's put 40 pixel because the last option is not visible so click on the load more load more and you can see this little space but we will also get this little space uh, i think from the other part of this one all right so it looks good and i think if you want you can also remove the margin 
like the margin we have added here for the tech content we added the margin or the margin is coming from here so margin top margin bottom I think this padding is coming for from this one because it seems that this tech is stuck and then this one is coming okay so it's coming from the same oh, okay it's in the same starting point and it's in the same starting point because of the shadow it's not visible sometime all right so everything is fine here so you have learned how to add uh, this pagination lot more pagination functionalities this lot more pagination so in many websites you will see this kind of thing so if you have if you are dealing with a small amount of data then you can just quickly follow this uh, solution to add this lot more functionalities so I'm gonna stop this video right here and we will continue with from next lecture oh, welcome back once again in this part I will show you how can we add this kind of features for example based on the position we're gonna have we're gonna mark this item okay in many website you will see that the first item or the second item is gonna mark so I'm gonna show you how can you do this kind of conditional rendering and also need to do a little fixing here because you can see that this this number is outside of the box okay so let me quickly fix this one here we don't have it so I'm gonna so this and this one this tech number is gonna is contain our this uh, position so I'm gonna update this one so the tech number here so let's put um let's put margin top minus 30 pixel so if i put if i select minus then it is gonna uh, take a space from the top you can see now it took a uh, margin from the top so this is how this minus uh, property work and now click on the load more we can see this post all right everything is fine now let's add a conditional rendering here for example by default I want to mark this one maybe this color or any other color okay so how we do it so here if you look at here then you will see this this tech uh, this tech content this one contain the whole design okay so where is this one this is the tech content that takes all of our information so here I'm gonna add a condition based on the index so here I can say this this index this index equal equal zero this if this index is equal equal zero then show one class name else show this class name I'm gonna cut it here we're just dynamically changing the class name and then based on the class name we will add we can say here tag con content marked okay now if I refresh it and then you will see that the first number position design has been replaced design has gone because because of this because the class is different than, than this one if I put this one here also then it should come here but uh, we want to have a different design I want to take all this but I want to change the background color I want to change the color of this one so I'm gonna copy this tech content marked here so tech content I'm gonna say tech content marked and then here I'm gonna give it a background color I'm gonna say background color I'm gonna give it let's give it blue violent and let's see what we have now so now it has by default this blue violet and as soon as we hover it we can see this our hover effect and now the question is that how we are getting this one is because that here I said that this tech content contain this all the design like all this one so I have also added this one on top of that I have added another extra class which contain this tech content mark so by default it is gonna take all the design from this tech content as it is here but on top of that it's gonna take extra new design that I am gonna add here okay so I'm gonna say 
tomato here and this is going to be this color and I hover we get like the previous one so I can just change the color to white here so color is going to be white color and let's see now it should show white color okay so this one first one is gonna be marked and as soon as you hover we see this kind of effect and we can also add this hover effect for this button but let me show you one more thing here so for example you want to change the you want to mark the second one so let's put it one so now this is our one number position in our array all right so we have this zero and this is one so this way you can define which one you want to mark so i'm gonna put it and we'll give it zero all right so now let's add uh, this hover effect for this load more button also so i'm gonna add hover effect so this is our load more button so copy this load more button and then just put the hover here and i'm gonna add the background color so let's say maybe blue violet and we can see this and we can also add this transition here let's say transition so transition duration of one second and then you can see this design i hover it and i get this one so everything is fine so i hope that you have learned how to add this tag stack uh, this kind of design i mean this kind of marked and conditionally you can render you can also render different kind of uh, color for different items the way i have added here so it's very easy there is nothing serious nothing complex define the color and then pass the index position and our code looks really clean so in the next part we will continue working so i'm gonna stop this video right here welcome back once again in this part we will start working on our project section you can see that we have the name of the project and then the technology that has been used to build this project and then the live demo of the project and if i click on it then you can see a little bit of description you can add a lot of text here and if it is open then this one is marked and icon has been changed again i click on it and this thing so these are the functionalities that you are going to learn while you will build this uh, this collapse features in this project section so let's get it started and for that first and foremost i'm gonna create a folder for this project inside this components directory so i'm gonna say projects and inside this projects i'm gonna create project.js file i'm gonna copy it to create to create our CSS file so project.css and then I'm gonna create another file for project list because we will separate all this component all this design in a separate component and then we will show it in our project component so that you can learn how to pass data from one component to another component all right so I'm gonna create here another file called project list I'm gonna save it and then it's going to be a JS file and now let's create the function here is going to be project list and this one is our project so now this project we need to this one because this is going to this is gonna hold our main design thing and all like this section is gonna hold this file project file but for the designing stuff to show the data I will use this project list file all right so now we need to connect this project into our app.js file so i'm going to import this one into app.js so import say project and after this take a stack i'm going to just put it here all right so now first and foremost let's uh, add a container here change the class name to container and now we should be able to see our project this is the project we can see this project text and it's working so we will now start adding the design stuff so inside this container 
first and foremost we need to have a title that we have here like the same title you already remember that we have created a separate we have created a section title uh, component here uh, somewhere in this tech stack we can just simply copy this one and reuse it so this is our section title that we have here so I'm gonna copy this section title from here and I'm gonna put it here and it's going to be our project section so I'm gonna say projects and here you go now we have this section here now we need to add we need to add our API data so first let's uh, let's create the API data okay so if I click on this live demo then it's gonna open the project link that I have just added here for example this is the project link that I have added here this is my another project all right so this way we can do it so we need our title then this is our nested uh, information and then one description and then the link so first I'm gonna design this API here so generate it I'm gonna say const and this is going to be data and data is going to be here and here we need to add the project name I'm gonna say name uh, I'm gonna say name name is going to we can say Marnestock job portal then I'm gonna have a uh, what I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna have description for this one so let's put the description here so I'm gonna put some dummy text okay we have the Lauren exam dummy text here right so I'm gonna just where it is this is our project I think so I'm gonna just copy some dummy text here you can just put your project description that you want to show okay so I'm gonna just put some dummy text here all right so this is going to be our description and after this description we will need to have one more field called so description and then I'm gonna say project link and this link is going to be like if you have built any project that you want to show you can just link your project okay so for example if I click on it it opens uh, my another website or you can just for now you can just uh, copy any uh, website link and then just put it so that when as soon as you have your another project you can just put it here just a, just a website link maybe you can just put YouTube and Google link or anything here and then so let me see what we have here so the title then the description then the link and then we have all this information these are the technology that has been used to build this project okay so the reason I have added this one so these things we're gonna add in a nested array okay so it means that inside this one is an area area item inside this area item we are gonna define another array for all this tech stuff we can say here tech used okay here like the same way we are designing this array here like the JSON data I'm gonna define it here this way okay and we can say uh, tech name here I'm gonna say node.js that that has been used and I'm gonna copy it a couple of more times for different options two three let's say four so node.js and then I'm gonna say express.js I'm gonna say react.js and then I'm gonna say next.js okay so what I am doing here like this one this whole item contain one option like this card this one information we will add another one for this one okay so what I did here added name description project link and then inside this array I have created another array to show all this to show uh, the tech has been used to build this project inside this array okay so when you will work on Marnestack project or any kind of website you often get this kind of API data and in that case you will have to use it okay so you are gonna learn it and I will show you how can you look through this data also and then you can show it here in this shape okay so um, this one is one and let's put it now I'm gonna copy it and let's put a couple of more so instead of we can say Marnestock, I'm gonna say event management. 
event management portal and then I'm gonna change maybe I'm gonna say here mm, I'm gonna say here uh, uh, let's say Django okay so I'm just using some random tag and then export JS react JS node JS instead of react JS let's put it view JS here and then put nux JS here okay so then I'm gonna copy one more time minus stack event management then minus stack uh, you can say social media and then uh, let's put it again uh, node JS so then I'm gonna say here TypeScript okay so these are the two three and this one is going to be the fourth one I can say minus tag video uh, streaming video streaming okay so say not JS express JS and then I'm gonna say angular JS okay so we have created this four or JSON error. you can just create as many as you want so I want to just show four one okay sorry one two three four okay let's put it six here um, so that we can show a lot of data here so I'm gonna copy it two more times and then I'm gonna say I can say minus tag online learning platform online learning platform and then this one is going to be minus tag maybe e-commerce app <sighs> maybe um, e-commerce so then uh, we can say angular and then we can say redux the technology that I have used then instead of typescript let's put it materialui materialui okay let's put a couple of more here and then use the material UI and then say uh, react.js react.js I'm gonna give it capital for all this JS and then this one And this one and this one and this one is a small all right so these are the this our array so don't get confused here and you can see that we have this API and then this one you can call it JSON API and we are gonna show this JSON API in our application all right so for that how we will do it now so this container this section title is gonna contain our section title after that I am gonna define a row here okay so I'm gonna say div and then I'm gonna add class name and then his class name is going to be row and inside this row we will have to add our column so I want to have so div and here I'm gonna say class name so I'm gonna add here call Excel 6 so call Excel 6 and then call um, L LG 6 and then I'm gonna add call MD for in the for in the medium device I think okay we can keep it 6 and then uh, I'm gonna add here 12 so a small call Excel 6 and then call LG 6 then call MD 6 and call a small 12 okay so we will have to look through the data here and we want to show it here so how we do it so the way we do it is for example uh, so now we won't be able to see anything here okay this is our project we won't be able to see anything here so let me show you let's do loop through here 
so our data is gonna contain all of our um, project information so this data dot map and then I'm gonna say item and then I'm gonna say index here and inside this I am gonna put this column okay now just for an example just for an example I'm just gonna we're not gonna do it in this way we will separate our code in this pro, in this project list file okay so I'm gonna do this one in this project list file. just for example here I'm just showing the name okay so item dot name so that we can see exactly so now here you go we can see this three and this then this three so we are able to load our data but we are gonna separate our design in this file like I mean this design and we will show it here okay so how we will do it is very easy to do it you are gonna learn how to pass data from one component to another component but we will do it from our next lecture see you in the next lecture oh welcome back once again in this part we are gonna design this component all right so first let's uh, add our required design in our project list class so first I'm gonna define here a class name we're gonna say that so first what we have here at first we have this title and then this button okay when I click on it we change the button so we can say here um, title title and collapse button collapse option okay so now inside these two things what we need to have we we, we will show of uh, one icon and then one uh, our and our title okay so now first let's grab our data from here so here so far uh, we don't need to have this one okay so now this column is gonna loop through this way okay and we are gonna design this this part this card in our project list so first import this project list here so I'm gonna say import project list now we're gonna pass all of this information that we're gonna get from this JSON API to this project list component and how we do it we will do it in this way first let's pass the key so we can pass the key here so key is going to be uh, index which is about this index and here we need to pass all of our information so there are two ways to do it one we can directly do it using a spread operator that we have like triple dot and then all of our data are now here in this item so we can say this item so this way all of this data from this JSON API is gonna come here okay in this component for example but now what we need to do we need to pass all this information based on this one so based on this name okay you can't write here different name here so here I'm gonna add this bracket and then I'm gonna add name here okay and I'm gonna put the name and just for example here let's place this place this name I'm gonna say name here now we should be able to see our name here we can see our name is here so the thing is that now if I make changes here let's say we can say uh, tech name tech name here okay if I write this name that doesn't contain in this API okay then what will happen and then put it here then what will happen then we won't be able to see any any information here so the thing that I wanted to show you that if you are gonna use this spread operator here this spread operator to pass all of our API data at once then you have to use this name exactly the name that you will get from your API endpoint for us is name but here I am using this one there's a reason that it is not working but if I just pass one by one every item then it, it is gonna work let's remove this one now what is the name of our component here our component name is sorry our the, the, the thing that, like this parameter name is this tag name here so I'm gonna just put it here what it's gonna contain we're gonna pass the name here so now if I write here item so item dot name 
then it's gonna work again so again you can see that this is the name so if you want to pass each and every item separately then here you can give any name whatever you want and this name is going to be equal to this item dot name this item dot name means like the name or the field that we will get from our api endpoint okay so it's an extra work for you to write each and every name again and again okay and there's a reason that is the smart way is to use this spread operator that we have in javascript so i'm gonna say item and here we just need to put the same uh name field here so i'm gonna just put it name and then i'm gonna put it name here in this way so let's add all this in field so this in description and then i'm gonna add this description here and then i'm gonna add project link after the description project link and then this tech used okay we don't need to pass this one right now we will see how we can get this nested array information all right so now we have all of our data that we are getting from our this component inside this one so now you can see that our code looks really clean so here we will have to add our design so how we do it here so first and foremost i'm gonna format this code and instead of s1 i'm gonna add a5 tag here and after that i'm gonna have a title uh, i'm gonna have an icon here okay so we will have to show an icon here okay so react icon so i'm gonna take like i am talking about this icon if i click it's gonna change so we need two icon so go to this one and i'm gonna choose this flat color icons copy this import first and put it in this project list and then i'm gonna copy the icon so this icon should be somewhere here where is it today so this icon like this is the left this is the previous here you go so this one fc expand i'm gonna copy this one and i'm gonna copy another one called fc collapse all right so after this is five so i am gonna add a p tag here and then i'm gonna add this option like this one first collapse okay just put any one uh, we will change it conditionally and then put the size i'm gonna put the size 20 uh, let's see how it looks now so it looks like this okay let's put it first expand here but it should comes one after another right so we need to use flexbox display flex but before that i want to have a card here so how we do it okay so here uh, i did a mistake here not exactly mistake we need this div but before that i want to wrap this div with another div where we will add this box shadow this okay so i'm gonna create another div here and i'm gonna wrap this div here and give it a class name we can say called project list project list okay now this project list class is gonna hold all of our design that we are gonna add in this field okay okay so now i'm gonna call this project list in our css and here i'm gonna add the box shadow first so we are using a box shadow i'm gonna copy the box shadow that i have this one the light one you can use your box shadow you can generate any I already told you how to do it so this is the project list and in this project list so let's see what can we see now we can't see anything I think we didn't call this CSS file here okay so I'm gonna okay so we didn't add the CSS file here so I will have to do it import project.css project.css
now we should be able to see something we can see now there is cart but we need to add a little bit more design here so i'm gonna add here let's add margin so margin 10 pixel and then i'm gonna put padding so i'm gonna put padding 10 pixel and then i'm gonna put border radius 5 pixel little border radius 5 pixel all right so now it looks like this quite better than the previous one now let's put these two things one after another okay in two corner so our this title and collapse option this class is gonna contain this title of our project and then the on the icon okay we will change the icon conditionally based on the uh, collapse and collapse features that we will add so first let's copy this one and here i'm gonna use display flex so i'm gonna use um, display flex for this one and justify content so put display is going to be flex and then justify content uh, a space between so we need to use a space between so that this text can start from left side and this one can start from right side okay you can see and then i want to have a little margin from from both for both i can say margin uh, five pixel it will give little margin from left and right and top like this margin okay now we have this similar design now first let's add our border when you hover this one so this project list is gonna contain all this box okay like this project list is gonna contain our everything so we need to hover this one so i'm gonna say this project list dot hover so project list dot hover and here we are gonna add a hover functionalities here so i'm gonna say border left border left is going to be five pixels solid five pixels solid i can i'm gonna choose a blue violet color violet color not violent blue violet i think and then we need to use cursor pointer and then let's see what we have now we can see this design now this shape uh, but the thing is that uh, i want to have little transition here like you can see that it's very smooth it's very smooth so it looks nice so i'm gonna i'm gonna put here transition here so transition uh not transition exactly it should be transition duration so transition uh duration is going to be one second and here you go now it looks really nice now what we want to have we want to have and notice one thing that we have added margin 5 pixel for this text so i want to start everything from the same distance okay so we will keep margin 5 pixel for all this item now let's design these things the nested loop that we have here so our here we have added this tech use this tech used contain this tech used contain all this nested array here right so we are gonna design we're gonna add a array we are gonna add a row here and then we're gonna put this one so that it looks it makes responsive okay because if i am in the mobile screen then here in this responsive view you will be see that you'll be able to see this this project and this one is showing in one row okay and this way we can also do it so i'm gonna do this kind of shape here there's a reason i want to have a row here so that we can define who is the screen how many uh, items how many column we want to show in bigger screen it always has this mass okay four so there's a reason that i am gonna define a row here after this div so i'm gonna add a div class name is going to be a row here and then here i'm gonna add a map here to show our data so now as i told you that this tag used that we have in our api is gonna contain everything inside this array so here we can say that tag used sorry not this one 
on this one this tag used and so here I'm adding a condition it means that if we have this tag used tag used uh, this uh, this array in our this JSON array then we want to say we want to show tag used dot map you can say that it's just an another condition to add so not name and then here we can do the same thing we can say item and then pass the index position here and uh, we can so instead of item here why don't we say it tag tag just give it any name so uh, here and then I'm gonna use these things so now here I'm gonna define the column so for this one I'm gonna define the column so this column will be like I can copy this one from here I was talking about this but we will change it but we will change it change the class name this is going to be column 6 uh, but I want to show it four items so I'm gonna select here three and then in medium screen I want to show two so in medium screen we can keep six and in a small screen we can do we can take uh, 12 uh, medium yes we can take three I think okay if we will we will we will have a look on it and then we will change it so in extra large screen we're gonna show four in large screen we're gonna show three we're gonna show in medium screen we're gonna show two and in smaller screen we're gonna show only one so if you in case don't know that bootstrap has 12 column by default and we just if we divide here three then three into four is gonna be 12 three times four is gonna be 12 so we will show three so this is how you need to multiply it so six means six times two is 12 so it in medium screen we will show only two now here we need to show our information I mean our the tag used here so here I'm gonna define another div and here I'm gonna pass okay let's put let's send the key here otherwise it will give us a soft error so I'm gonna say index here this index the unique key and here I'm gonna pass a class name and this class name is going to be you can say tag used tag used in project and then here I'm gonna put it I'm gonna put a p tag here and then I'm gonna say tag so tag uh, which is this one and dot the name that we have what we have here in the API we have the tag name so I'm gonna say here tag name now let's see if we are able to we can see that now we have this node chase express chase react chase and next chase for this project we have django express chase view chase and next chase so it looks really nice and it's already coming one after another because here i have used row and this is the column now if i'm in in the different screen size but we can't see it so i will hide this nav bar you can see that like node.js express.js we will make it responsive i think we, i need to do it you can see that in medium screen we have two but we need to solve this uh, responsive issue with the sidebar we need to hide this one and we will have to create a new one but we will do it later so now let's add the design for this one so this tag used in project first and foremost i said all right so here let's uh, let's see that you can see that it's coming from here but it's coming from here so first put the margin here okay we will do it let's let's have this one so uh, i think we need to add this design here first uh, we use tech used in project tech used in project let's try to have little margin because it has margin i think from the top so okay first add
margin top 20 pixel and then copy this one we need to have it for the p tag because our text is inside the p you can see inside the p tag so now here we do need to have the margin top for this p tag i need to have background color i'm gonna choose this tomato we will change it if it is required then color is going to be white color and then i'm gonna choose border radius so border radius is going to be 90 pixel and then i'm gonna put fading 8 pixel and then uh, let's see what we have now so we can see these things so we have now this design all right so we can put the text in the center we can say text align center it should be in the center i think cool and i think here we can just put margin 5 pixel so margin 5 pixel because here we used margin 5 pixel for the title so it's gonna have a space now it seems that it is coming from the same distance okay so it looks really nice i really liked it and now so instead of this black color i think i can use this this color and i can also change the font size maybe we can add a font family let's see let's add a font family here and see how it looks so add font family i don't know how it looks this font family but it looks like this of oh, which one is looking good i'm not sure maybe the black one or uh, this one or this tomato color and i'm not gonna use this font family i'm gonna use a different font family so choose font family this one okay so now it looks good now what we have we have our live demo and i'm not sure if i should show the text before this live demo or after this one so we will just try which one is gonna look better and then we will do it here so now what we need to show so this is our row this row is gonna contain everything and after this row we are gonna have our button for for we need to show another button we need to add another button for the for the link okay so here i can say div div is going to be class name and class name is going to be live demo button live demo button and here we need to add a p tag and then the a tag um i think we don't need to add here we can directly use here i'm gonna choose a button here and let's put the anchor tag here and then here i'm gonna say live demo and here we need to uh we need to pass we inside this anchor tag we need to use our link so href href is going to be the link so how we pass the link so our link is here we can see project link we are getting here that we are coming that just coming from this project link so i'm gonna put it here in the href because href is for to add the link and now we can see that this link now if i click on it i should be able to move to this side okay but now it's directly sent to the to the link that we that we have but i want to open it in a, in a new tab okay when i click on it i want to open it in a new tab like the way it has like in a new tab okay for that we have another property called target in anchor tag called target and it's going to be underscore all right so this target underscore this and now if i click on it it's going to open in a new tab now let's add the design stuff so um let me copy this one so live demo button here and this live demo button i'm gonna add here so this live demo button and 
I'm gonna add first add a background color so I'm gonna choose background color I'm gonna choose a background color let's choose a brown and then add border radius 90 pixel and color I'm gonna choose white color and I'm gonna put the white is going to be fit content let's see what we have now so it looks like this okay it looks really bad now so we still we need to fix few things so we need to add um, okay so first let's change the air tag color so this one and cut tag A and then here we have so it's going to be color so color I think color has been changed right uh, no it doesn't change here because this color is coming from the anchor tag so we need to put this color here and then it, it changed we need to remove the underline here so I'm gonna say text decoration none and the underline has gone I'm gonna add padding here so I'm gonna add padding 10 pixel and okay so we need to add margin here margin 5 pixel so add to margin 5 pixels so that it is start from the same yeah now it's coming from the same position so padding is this uh, but why it's not looking good so this padding 10 pixel and then the text is already in center I think here we can add maybe you can add padding here also for this button yes now it looks bigger so this is our uh, uh, live demo button I click on it it goes to the new tab I click on it it open a new tab here I click on it it open a new link new tab and then I can see our browser our project so this is our live demo now I think I can choose the green color or some other colors for this one the red color is also looking good here I can keep this one now let's add uh, let's add the box the hover of effect so this live demo button when user click on it when user hover this one so I want to show a different color I'm gonna say background color background color is going to be uh, how many colors we have maybe we can choose this blue violet color but I want to have transition duration I think we already have this one like this transition duration is going to be one second and here you go it looks really nice all right so now I want to have the text here like the description of our project so how we show the description of our project um so we can we can have our description of our project so here we have our description so I'm gonna create we can directly define it in the p tag and I'm gonna say this description here and here you go we can see our description but let's put me on the top here I think after this title now it will look like this this is our description so if we will click on it then we're gonna show the rest of the information but then it is gonna look bad I don't want to show the text directly so I want to show it like this way or we can also keep this one maybe we can just add sub string here and description dot sub string there is a property called sub string sub string I think this one 0 comma 50 then it shows this amount of like little information and when user uh, click on it we show them the rest of the information okay if they click on it uh, we show them uh, rest of the part I think it will look better so um, 
uh, we can add this kind of condition here when they click on it we can directly show them this information and then uh, we can just do this one okay so this information here we have okay so another thing is missing here and the hover of this one so this one is contain tech used in project I'm gonna copy this one so tech used in project here so we need to add a hover for this one I want to add a hover so tech used in project and here I'm gonna change the background color so background color is going to be um how it looks let's try okay so I didn't add the hover here and here you go why it's not coming here it should come here right oh no it's showing this way okay because this border radius is here okay so we need to add this hover for this p here add the put the p here and then it's gonna look like this but this color is not good i'm gonna use a different color or this blue how that is good maybe we can try the black one also yeah so the black one we can choose for this one and for this one this color okay so so if we use this sub string here like this way in description to sub string then we can define how many letter we want to show from 0 to 150 letter we want to show now but when user will click on when user will click on it click on the button we will show them rest of this information okay so it will look good um so how we do it we will add this collapse feature in the next lecture see you in the next lecture oh welcome back once again in this part we will try to add these collapse features okay so if user click on it then we're going to show the details information and then we're going to also change this one and as soon and also the open one we're gonna have this marked border okay so how we will do it is very easy nothing complex here so first I'm gonna define a state here a boolean state so I'm gonna add here use state and then I'm gonna add const is going to be this show and then going to be set show So it's going to be use a state and by default it's gonna be false and here I'm gonna add our arrow function I'm gonna say handle uh, handle you can say uh, show and collapse show and collapse you can just give it any name and here I'm gonna say set show is going to be opposite All right. So when user click on it by default, so when you so by default this state is going to be false. As soon as user click on this function, it will become true. Again, they click on it, it, it will become false. So there's a reason that I have added this set show, uh, this not equal to show. So whatever it has, it's not exactly not equal. I mean, it means that whatever we we will have in our state is gonna do the opposite one. This is how it's work. So now, if you look at here carefully this project list is going to contain our entire thing right so i uh, you can also give this uh, function here but it would be nice if user click any of this place okay instead of just this icon so i want to have when you click on this card in this in this card uh, i want to show the whole details of this text of this description so this project list is going to call so i'm going to add here on click so on click and here I'm gonna call this function alright so as soon as it's going to be true I, I want to change the icon if it is false then if it is false now it's false I want to show this one this expand icon this way so now this show which is this show that contains now this information so this show now if it is false then I want to show this else i want to show another icon which is going to be this collapse icon and now okay 
So I did exactly the opposite because because by default it is false. If it is false, then I want to if it is false, then I want to yeah, but by default this standard operator means it always check the true one. Okay? So it means that if first one is true, then it will show this expand one, but first one is not true. First one is false. There's a reason that is showing this. So I just gonna so expand means which one? Yeah, expand is like this one. And now if I put it true here, I click on it, I show this one, click on it, show this one. It's also gonna work, so but I'm gonna put it false by default. So if, if it is false, and then if it is false, and then I'm gonna say this one. If it is false, then I'm gonna put it this way. So put this collapse first, just make it opposite here. And then I'm gonna put it here. So if it is false, then it will show this one first. And as soon as it gets true, then it will show this one. Now it's false. It click on it, it gets true, and then it's true, then this one is. Okay? This way we can show this icon. So this one is expand. So this one is expand, right? So if it is false, then it shows the expand icon here. So which is this one, okay? So so when we add ternary operator, it count the first one expect true, which is not uh n n not n not true here because our this state is false. So as soon as it gets false, it shows this one, and as soon as it it gets true, it shows the collapse option. Okay. So now I want to have another condition here for this description. If it is false, if it is true, then we want to show entire description. If not, I want to show this. How we do it? So again, I'm gonna add this one, this show. If this one is true, if show our true, if it gets true, then I want to show this entire text. I want to show description i want to show the whole description if it is not true if it is false then i want to show okay if it is false then i want to show this description i want to show this one okay so what does it mean that if once it gets true i want to show whole description if it false, i want to show only 150 character now now if I click on it You can see now it's working so as soon as it gets true we can see the whole text is False and then we can see this one it goes same for this one also So if it is true, then we can see Whole text if it falls then we will see only 150 if you want you can just change it just to add more information let's put it here 10 so if it falls then we have only this information as soon as i click on it we can see the whole text so this is how this uh, this is how it this works okay and here just to understand our user that there will be some other text we can just put some dot here so that they know that there will be a few more things they click on it and they get the details information of this one alternatively we can also put here another text called read more after this maybe we can put here a text called sheet read more and then they click on it they get these things they click on it they get these things okay we can also do these kind of things now first uh, we will fix it later if you need it so i'm gonna put it 150 now let's make some changes in this border so if it is open then i want to mark this one so for that here i'm gonna add the same condition so show if this show is true then 
then define a new class I'm gonna call it project project list opened and then I'm gonna copy this one and put it here so project list opened and this class name we need to call if it is true and I also added this one so that we get all the all the design stuff here in this class also now nothing is gonna happen let's call it here so project list opened I'm gonna add it here where is the project list we can just write it after this one so project list opened and here I'm gonna add the same uh, design for this border like this border border left 2 pixel 5 pixel solid blue highland this is open and you can see this this background color now I click on it it gone it doesn't matter how many is open so this way we can just show and another thing is that here we need to put little margin here here because we didn't add the margin for our for our description okay so our description is here so here we can why don't we wrap this description um, with with a, with a div here so I'm gonna wrap this information in a div in a div and then I'm gonna put a class name here I'm gonna say description and then we can just call this description margin 5 pixel we can just call this description and then I'm gonna say margin 5 pixel hope it solved our our problem here now I think yes we got this uh, margin 5 pixel from here also now we can see this everything is starting from the same position cool so it looks really nice okay now in a small de device a responsive device it will also look good you can see how cool it is perfect but uh, we will remove this one uh, dynamically and these are the few things that I wanted to show you click on this one it's gonna open to a new link in, in a new tab our project all right so you have learned these uh, functionalities so I'm gonna stop this I think everything is fine here or anything is left let me check it again everything is fine here we didn't let anything and here we go cool all right so I'm gonna stop this video right here and we will continue from our next lecture see you in the next lecture oh welcome back once again in this part we will try to fix few things for example I don't want to have this read more and then we're gonna learn um, on mouse hover effect so the read more is coming from here this one okay so I'm gonna remove this read more here or I think um, I'm gonna remove this read more from here or if I put it in this in another p tag then how it looks so if I put it in this way read more then it's gonna add in the bottom here and then here maybe we can just add a color here so I'm gonna ch add a style and then I'm gonna say style is going to be color and color is going to be I can say green color and so we can see this lead read more we can also add this way here yeah if you want you can definitely do it okay let's keep this one so instead of green maybe we can choose yellow uh, not the yellow maybe we can choose orange so we can just eat this read more actually we don't need to have this one because this button uh, indicates this thing so I'm gonna just remove it but I just wanted to show you that you can also do it in this way anyway so now we don't have this one click on it we can see this and another thing is that um, another thing is that 
you can if you want you can also add the uh, font family here let's try to add explore some font family so maybe this one then it's gonna look like this so let's change the font family okay so I'm gonna keep this font family for this description this family so sometimes this font family uh, increase the look and now the thing is that um, here I want to teach you something new for example on mouse hover effect so when in many website you will see that they they use on mouse hover effect uh, what I mean by this for example if you hover any YouTube video then you see few icons gonna appear here so I just wanted to show you this kind of things here okay so that you can learn how to do it so to add this on mouse hover effect so the same way we are so here this project list here we are passing this on click this function right and it it it's, it's it gives us this false and true and based on this result we are showing our description but react has another property called on mouse enter and on mouse leave so here when they will click on this card on this div that contain this whole thing i'm gonna add on i'm gonna add on mouse enter okay so it's gonna take a arrow function here um fat arrow function and here when we when our user enter their mouse on this div which contain this div now it will give you an error this div okay we want to set it true and based on the result you already know that if it is true then we show our description okay so this set show here set show i'm gonna put it true and now let's see the magic i hover this mouse is gonna true automatically i didn't click now you can see the look at carefully i'm here and it's, it's it gets true and i didn't do anything if i click on it then it's gonna collapse okay so you can also use this kind of effect here and this way you can do this you hover the mouse you can see this description and you click on it it collapse okay this way everything is gonna open whenever when um, as soon as you hover this item so this is the way to do it and this way you can also do you can also show and hide information any icon okay and now they have another property for, for example now as soon as I hover uh, it gets true but if I remove the mouse from this car it is not gonna remove it is not gonna hide okay and if I click on it then it's gonna collapse and it's happening because I have added this handle uh, show and collapse function here in the on click there's a reason when I click on, on it I am able to I am able to collapse these options okay but the, there is a property called on leave on mouse leave from react chess it calls on mouse leave this one so as soon as uh, user leave the mouse what we want to do we want to uh, we want to set it false and if it's false then we don't show our description so let's put it on mostly false here open leave it collapse open leave it collapse so as soon as I leave this mouse from this item it's gonna collapse automatically okay and let's refresh it first so that we can see all this information so I collapse this one is gonna collapse and leave it is gonna collapse expand and collapse so this way you can do it not only this way you can also show any kind of icon or any kind of information okay so what I mean by this for example if I hover just for an example purpose maybe after this div I want to show an icon so for example I will remove it just to show you how you do it um, not this one so here this show if show is true I want to show an icon um, I want to show an icon whose icon let's say um, okay so how I do it so there is an icon um, okay let's do it in this way just a text don't need to add icon if it is true then I want to show here uh, new text just for example else I want to show null here so if it is true I want to show this text use null you can see new text as soon as I hover it it's gone 
hover it it goes so this way you can add home you can do hover and um, hover option uh, i mean in the hover effect for example uh, in many websites you will see this that you will see the drop down option so in that case you can also add and the drop down features for example if you hover any option you you show something this way you can just use uh, on mouse hover and on mouse leave functionalities even you can show icon and all this information you can also add this thing in our sidebar and this way okay but for now for this project i'm going to remove this one now for the project i don't want to have this on mouse leaf maybe i will just keep on mouse enter here okay as soon as user hover here it gets open and they can read the information they click on it and then they come here they click on it and it's gonna open here this way they click on it and it's gonna call up so it looks much more of uh, of uh, effective based on the design if you want to show user information in this way but if you don't like to have this one you can just uh, you can just uh, remove this one so this is just i wanted to show you that how you can um how you can add load how you can add this uh, on mouse hover effect in that case okay All right, I hope that you have learned it and just define a boolean state and then just use on mouse enter and then just make it true or false and this way you can just do it. So I'm going to stop this video right here and we will continue from next lecture. Oh, welcome back once again in this part. We will add our timeline component, all right? So our data, our API is ready. And we also install this uh, timeline component. Now let's read the documentation. So here they say that, so these are the thing that we can just copy from here directly. And then we can see what we have here. But obviously uh, we will use our data. So I'm gonna copy this entire thing like from the vertical timeline to this end of vertical timeline, like all this code. I'm gonna copy this one. And then after this container, after this inside this container after this div i'm gonna put it here and i'm gonna format this one so they have like this is the vertical timeline inside this vertical timeline they have this vertical element and is element contain um is element contain one item okay so we will not do it in this way because we will we have our api data and then we will just uh we'll look through it but now let's see what we have here so work icon is not defined okay so we need to add icon here because it has a property called work icon here so the icon is like this icon so i'm gonna take an icon from from react icon so i'm gonna choose one icon we can so what kind of icon they have here like they have this kind of icon okay so we can just copy anything here we can say work icon and so i'm gonna copy there isn't any work icon that's directly related to this work but um I can copy this one or I'm gonna copy this one okay MD so I'm gonna put it here and to use work icon that's to use react icon we need this uh, where we use this react icon so in the sidebar right so I'm gonna open the sidebar list I just wanted to take this one like one of these and then i'm gonna rename it so this one is going to be md group and md starting point and this is going to be md so now let's use this one for the first item uh where is the icon so they have icon property and i'm gonna put this one here and i'm gonna also put this one for the second one and the rest i'm gonna remove i just want to have two for now I'm going to remove all this, all of their code. 
so just now I just have two vertical item uh, vertical timeline element inside this vertical timeline so vertical timeline you can assume is the main section and this one is contain this vertical timeline element now what we have now you can see that we have these two option okay and it doesn't have this one has color but this one doesn't have color but don't worry we are gonna make changes we're gonna add uh, all the required design here all right so first and foremost let's remove the one we just need to have one because we're gonna loop through here we're gonna add our map our api data here so our data is inside the data component it's a data area so i'm gonna say this i'm gonna say this in data so data dot map here i'm gonna say um item and index and inside this i'm gonna put this vertical timeline and here now this one should uh, loop through uh, how many times one two three four five six times because we have six item but it's showing the same information but we want to have a different name uh, i mean different details here so here we have we need to add our um first let's change the background color okay let me explain you a few things here like inside this this vertical element this vertical uh, timeline element takes two parameters it takes uh it takes not two parameter these are the parameter these are the props that is pre-built in this vertical element in this in this vertical timeline component you can read the documentation here so for the vertical timeline and these are the props and for vertical timeline elements these are the props so using all these props we can uh, dynamically change the color for example here you can see that it has different color for each and every items okay so i'm gonna add color first so this color is coming from this color you can see this content is tell this content is class that they have here you can see the background color so this content is tell color this content is tell class that is coming from this component is is contain the background okay so i'm gonna add background color here so we have six items here so i'm gonna choose i'm gonna define a area of colors so you remember that how we do how we add color code how we add a uh, color code i mean dynamically that we did for tag stack i think here we did this color okay these are the color that we did so i'm gonna just copy of uh, some color from here so i'm gonna co take this three color so i have the color picker so i'm gonna just quickly uh, pick some color from here so this color i'm gonna pick this is the color code here i'm gonna copy this color code and i'm gonna put it here and here and then i'm gonna choose the second one uh, this color code and it's it's about it's this color code so you can just simply write your color or you can just type my color code then i'm gonna choose this one i'm gonna choose this one here and what else so three and i'm gonna choose uh this color code like this one looks good i like this color code from here like from this one to this color code i want to choose so i'm gonna have i'm gonna choose this color code this one is going to be fourth so three and it's going to be uh, number four and then um we can choose this one also four and then this one is fifth and we can choose the another one um maybe so let's see what color we have color code we have here so i think we can just choose this red one maybe i'm gonna choose this color code here so i'm just adding some uh, color code that i really like so that it looks really good but you can just use any color code here all right so now we have six color code and we have six data item and here as i told you there's this content style inside this vertical timeline element this content style it has a background color so i'm gonna remove this background color i'm gonna put this here colors 
and then I'm gonna pass the index position of our item using this index and then it's gonna add unique color code for each and every item here we go now we have this uh, now we have this color code right so these are the unique color code that I have now um, it looks good it looks good but I would prefer to change uh, this color code is uh, quite light I think we can choose something different or uh, maybe from here I can choose any other or maybe this one I can choose for the first for the first option so I'm gonna choose Um, this one I can choose for the first option so I'm gonna pick this color code and pick this one so change the first one alright so now we do have this color code okay so we will we will change it and and then here we have this color okay so here if you look at here this color and this color is same okay so we can also change this color dynamically so this color is coming from so this color is coming from this there is a class called um where it is so it calls icon style. you can see this background so instead of this background color we can just choose colors and then index and here you go this color and this color is same this color and this color is same for this color for this item and for this item as well okay so this is how we can do it now let's change the now let's change the item first so um h3 and h4 okay so this one is h3 this one is h4 so here put the name put the company name so item dot name or what we have here in our data we have this company name so i'm gonna put this name here so item dot this company name okay so now we can see our uh, unique company name and then this one is going to be a uh, job position we can put here that we have and then here i'm gonna say item dot position so now we should be able to see full list of developer full list of developer full stack developer okay so we have the same name right or we have the different name here uh, okay we will change it later now let's put this one so uh, like these are the thing that if you are if you're not gonna make any changes for this uh, subtitle and the title then you get this s3 design but if, if you want you can definitely change it and then in that case you need to add uh, your uh, design okay so s3 and s4 like for example if i put here uh a6 then it's gonna have different design like this uh, a smaller size you can just this way also change it okay and you can definitely do it and but uh, it looks really small so i'm gonna keep it uh, 40 and this paragraph tag so if this one will contain our description our position description so item dot description that we have here so these are the description these are our job description now what we have then we have our this uh this field right uh, our take stack field and how we do it like the same way we did so we will do it here uh, after the subtitle i'm gonna define a div here so I mean the the way we did it for our uh, for our project section. So here in the project section, you will see that in the project list we defined a row and then we added these things. So we can simply copy this one, I think, right? We can copy this one. Okay, let's write it instead of copy and paste. So I'm gonna define it a div and then I'm gonna add class name, and class name is going to be row, and then inside this we want to have um we want to have our uh we, we need to loop through here so now our data is inside this one so you can now you can see that 
uh, we are now in this data.mev and this item contain all of this data there's a reason we can show here item dot position item dot company name right so now we need to do if we want to access this array here tech skills then we will have to write it in this way so we will have to say item dot tech skills item dot tech skills dot map dot map and then here i can say and then um here inside this i will have to write this tag and then need to add index and here we can do the same thing here and inside this we need to add the column so uh, i'm gonna just copy this one oh uh, just uh this uh this uh column okay so i can just put this column here so i want to have this column um instead of three okay just uh, remove this one uh remove this two and this is remove this one remove this one okay so here just add uh this column and here i want to show um let's put it three here maybe three and then uh we will see four options here okay in one line yeah i have added four okay uh, okay we will change it if it is required then in the uh, larger side it will show three it will show four four and then two and twelve one and now inside this i want to have uh, one more uh, div here and this div will contain all of our design i'm gonna add this div and then inside this div i'm gonna say um, tag uh, skills and inside this tag skills i am gonna add a p tag and this p tag will contain our this tag so tag dot tag name this tag name is this tag name okay so now this is our uh, item uh, so this tag is containing all this information in th inside this item dot tag skills and then we can say tag dot tag name which is this tag name and let's pass the key here so this key is going to be this index position all right so now we should be able now let me refresh it and here you go we can see this uh node.js express.js react.js all this information here okay but we need to add the design for this one and how we do it to add the design now we can call this one this tech skills copy this tech skills and inside this work experience.css and then here we can add the design for this one all right so um we can say take skills then p and then here we can add background color so let's put background color black color and then i'm gonna add border radius is going to be 90 pixel and then color is going to be white color and then i'm gonna put padding so i'm gonna put padding is going to be 10 pixel and then i'm gonna say text align center so here you go cool so we have this uh information all right so now we let's put it three it's, it's breaking something here so let's put it here four because we don't have much more space okay now it looks like this so it's showing three and here we go and it is responsive if i am in the responsive view mobile view then you will see this this is responsive you can see this item is responsive you don't need to look at this one we will make it responsive later just look at this item it is responsive okay in medium device we are showing two in this column and in smaller device and this one okay everything is fine here now uh, we need to add a little more design like add the um i like add the hover effect here so i'm gonna add hover effect for this one so this take is tell p when user go there dot clone is going to be hover and inside this hover i'm gonna change the background color background color i'm gonna choose let's put select this blue violet color 
a yeah but it doesn't look good so what else we can choose here okay so let's let's put a cursor pointer here so cursor pointer and then instead of blue violet maybe we can choose tomato but it is not gonna look good for some color because there are some that already red yeah because we already have kind of tomato color so I'm gonna change it I'm gonna change this color so maybe we can select it gold color let's see how it looks okay so this gold color looks really nice but when it hover I think we can change the color to black like the text color we can change the color to uh, black color so black will look good with the gold color and now yeah now it's more visible okay cool it looks nice and now another thing is that here you can see there is a line okay there is a line that we don't have here and this line will come from okay let me see if we can see the animation here okay so as we scroll you can see the animation so they do have this animation features like you can use this animation in the vertical timeline and then the line color okay so it says that line color this line color is coming from this this line color okay so let's add this line color and where we need to add this line color we need to add this line color in this vertical timeline props so you just read the you just read the uh, documentation here and then just you follow their instruction this is how I write code and you don't need to remember anything so now this is our vertical timeline that contains the entire timeline and this vertical timeline in the main content each and every item right so another thing so let's just put it here so this timeline and then in inside this line color I we need to put it's it's just a string so we can just put a color code so I'm gonna put color code um I'm gonna put color code the, which one is this color code I like this color code like this one the last one so I'm gonna choose the last one like this color code so I'm gonna put this color code here and cool now we have this line okay we have this line but we don't have this date date is not visible at all okay so what could be the reason so we need to fix this one so I'm gonna add uh, the date okay so we didn't add the date here so there is a date class here so um, here I'm gonna put item dot year so item item dot year so this year is this uh, year and now our date is here we can see this but it's by default is white color so we will have to add a class name for this one so here inside this vertical timeline props you can see there is a class name called dead class name let's call this class name and put it here um, we can just put it here and let's give it a class name we can say dead class you can give it any name whatever you want and then I'm gonna add the CSS for this one I'm gonna say dead class and change the color to black color and here you go now we can see our we can see our um, dead our year exactly cool so it looks really nice and uh, we have finished it almost but uh, in the next part we will try to fix few things if it is required see you in the next lecture welcome back once again so far we have finished our uh, work experience section so I'm gonna do a little bit of changes here and then I'm gonna start working on this education section and this education section will be similar to this one so let's fix few things first then we will start working on the education section so I want to give uh, give it a section name here so that we can have a little margin from the top so I'm gonna say work experience section and then I'm gonna add it in this I'm gonna add a CSS for this one let's put it on the top first so in this work experience section I'm gonna say margin top say um, 40 pixel and we got a little margin so let's put 50 pixel or 70 pixel 
all right so got margin from top and then another thing that i want to okay so if we want to change this color also okay how we do it so let's pick one color for this one maybe we can choose this color so i'm gonna take this color code okay so i think we have this color for one of this item yeah we do have so i was talking about this color code like this color not color code so this color is coming from here if you look at it in this vertical timeline element you will see there's content arrow style okay this is the color code that's coming so let's this one so if you want to change it then you can just put one uh, color code there here and then you can just use it you can just change the color so i'm looking for a color here so let's uh put this color okay so let's put this one this color code so i'm gonna pick this color code i'm gonna pick this color code and let's put it here if it is gonna work so solid it should work here yeah, you can see that this color has been changed okay so this way you can also change this color code so work experienced design and if we want to have little margin from this top then we can uh, it would be nice if we have little margin from this work experience okay so how we do it so then we will have to wrap this uh, vertical timeline component with another div then we can just do it in this way so i'm gonna define a div here i'm gonna say uh, class name say timeline section and then uh, put this one here so what i did here i just wrapped this vertical timeline component with a div so that i can sell a margin top from the top so now copy this timeline section here and then i'm gonna add say margin top i'm gonna say 50 pixel then we got this margin now it looks good okay uh, not 50 exactly so we can just decrease it to 20 pixel all right so now we need similar things for our education section so let's open a file first i'm gonna open a new folder inside these components is going to be our education section so education and inside this education i'm gonna create the education section education.css education.js and then one css file for this one so education.css then generate then add the arrow function and i'm gonna import the css here so import education.css now i need to call this education component into the app.js file and here i'm gonna put this import education from from components reverse education then education and then put this component here all right so now first and foremost what we need to have we need to have the similar design that we have for this uh for this one right for 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 this one we just don't need these things this one can be our we can just change it our uh our uh school or university or college name and then our degree name and then a little bit of information okay you can add as many um information as you want to have but for that so what can i do i can simply copy okay first let's uh um let's design this one okay so first let's add the container here so class name is going to be container and inside this container i want to have a title so what title i want to have like the section title that we have so i'm going to copy this section title that we are using so i'm going to put this section title here and then inside this section title so after this section title 
we will need to add this vertical timeline component okay but for that let's put the data first our json array so data is going to be this and here i want to have information about the name we can say uh, name is going to be our institution name we can say du munich or we can say du we can say berlin university or just for example let's say oxford university just an example and then i'm gonna say degree name we can say bachelor of i can say bsc software engineering and then i'm gonna say the year let's say 2000 so let's say 2000 um uh, okay so let's put it msc okay msc and then say 2022 2022 and i'm gonna add little description here so i can just copy some dummy text just some dummy text from here okay put this this amount of text here and cool so we have one item so i'm gonna copy it another item to just change the name mit and then this one is going to be bsc i'm just adding some random name and then i'm gonna say 2016 to 2020 and then another one this one is going to be for the college we can say so cambridge college and then i can say oh, okay so the degree spelling should be like this degree uh, degree and then the degree i can say um i can say college certificate college certificate or we can say college graduation for example and then so put the year here to uh, 14 to 16 2016 and then here i'm gonna put it to the we can say um i'm gonna say mit school or any school name queen school just random name and school graduation and here uh, i'm gonna put it 2000 2007 to 2013 okay so these are the four information four data so name degree year and then the description so we want to, we need to show it here and then we can just copy our component from here from our work experience because we need the same thing right then it's gonna work so this whole thing um, i'm gonna copy and then i'm gonna put it here so from here uh we what we don't need we don't need this row because we don't have this uh, information so i'm going to remove this row here we just need this plain information and here we are just going to look through data.map and our data is this data and then uh, this data okay this data and inside this uh, we need to pass the information so we need to now we need to have these colors so i'm going to copy these colors uh, array here so that we get uh, colors and put it here 
and then uh, we need to change the field name here so our um, our name degree and year so this one the first one is going to be our item dot name not the company name now because now in our area we have name and then this one is going to be our decrease second position is going to second option subtitle is going to be our degree so I'm gonna say degree and then the third one is going to be our description is the same so item dot description and here we have item dot here so we should be able to see so this vertical timeline is not defined so we need to define this vertical timeline here so these are the vertical timeline component so I'm gonna put it in the education section and then okay so now we need to put an icon here so I'm gonna take an icon here for this graduation we can say graduation okay so this is the icon that uh, we can copy these are the icon so I can choose this one or this one or this one we have a different icon here we have uh, something different here so I'm gonna choose let's skip this one or maybe this one which one I will take this one so in this education we need to put this icon but for that I need the import from this one so I can just copy this one and then I can just change it so import I'm gonna put this one here and it is start from FA so at the end I'm gonna change it to FA and then I'm gonna change the icon from here this one is contain our icon this icon now here you go your has gone this is our work experience this is our work experience now we should have our education so this is our education section okay you can see that our education section and we have this color and we have this nice icon everything is perfect but here I want to have little changes so this one is going to be our um, education section so this project is going to be education okay so this is not a project this is education and here you can see that um, all of this design that we already have here so this background color this color index we're using and then content arrow that we're using and this date item dot year data class name is that class name is also got it because uh, this this class name is connected with the work or work experience CSS there's a the reason that we can see it because same thing we don't need to write again and again it doesn't make any sense because we already have this design in this one and as we are using the same design so we can just reuse it here and now I want to have little space from the top so how can I do it for that let's define a class name here we can say education section and here I want to put I want to add CSS here so education.css and I want to say margin top 50 let's put 70 pixel and this 70 pixel we got now it looks really nice but here what we have uh, for the education okay so we can just change the degree name here I think I mean that we can just put it to is 5 I think uh, yeah now it looks good if we want we can also have little margin from top okay or it looks really nice so this is the year and this is the degree and I want to have a different color for this one so th for the reason that I want to choose a different I want to add a different color in the color series so from the tech stack from the tech stack I'm gonna choose this these four colors and then I'm gonna update this one update this education colors and now we should see different colors okay we should see different color now so instead of this color we can choose okay we can we can try another color I don't know what it is exactly I'm just okay which one is giving this one second one so I'm gonna change the second color code it should work or I got the same color code I think I got the same color code as I don't know the color code so I'm gonna pick I'm gonna pick the second one yeah 
yes second one we also used here but it's okay it's better than the previous one so this way we can just use our different color different color code here all right so and this one is obviously responsive everything is responsive here cool uh, no issue here so far we have finished it um, all right so let me explain you one more time here in the education section so we did the same thing that we had earlier okay so the same timeline component we are using here and we need to have the same kind of design structure so we just dynamically changing the background color here based on the index position this is our new array of data that we have here and then here we have we are just passing this uh, information name degree and then the description and then this one okay but if you want you can just have little color so let's say if you want to add so a style uh, if I want to add the color color is going to be um, you can say a red color if I want to show then this way you can also change the color okay but it doesn't look good here we can change we can change it to yellow color now it looks like this so it looks really great so this I'm gonna keep this yellow color here so this way you can just choose color but if you want you can add another item here it is not mandatory that you can only add these two but if you want you can add a lot of uh, information here depending on your depending on your need for example you want to have let's say you want to add a smart tag here and then you want to add some random text just for example just to show that if it is working you can see this random text is here for, for it's coming from each item for each items okay so this way you can just do design and you can do any kind of design and structure here so this third icon this third one this third background color i can change and i can give it to any of this color maybe we can give this pink color pink color i think we didn't use we haven't used this pink color so let's try this one how it it will look so i'm gonna put i'm gonna give this color and copy this color code and let me see uh, okay i missed this one so so this one right the first second and the third one so i want to change the third color code one two and then the third one is this so this color code so it looks good now okay perfect so we have finished our education section section and then we will have to work on our testimonial section where you are going to learn how to do slick slider functionalities all right so see you in the next lecture uh, welcome back once again in this part we will implement our testimonial so you can see that in the testimonial section we have this slider so we're gonna use react slick slider all right so for that let's create the file and folder first then we're gonna install our slick slider so inside this component directory i am gonna have another folder directory called testimonial and inside this testimonial i'm gonna have a js file testimonial.js and then we will need our uh, CSS file inside this testimonial also so testimonial.css now let's create this of uh, error function first our component function so testimonial and here I'm gonna implement I'm gonna import the CSS here so testimonial.css and now we need to connect this testimonial in our app.js file so here uh, import testimonial from this component and testimonial now i'm going to copy this testimonial and then just put it here now we need to add our container and inside this container we will add all of our code so class name i'm gonna say container 
all right so first we need to have our um our section that we are using here so where is this, where it is like this one the section title so i'm gonna copy this section title and i'm gonna put it here and after this section title we will have to use our um slider functionalities all right so now let's see what we have so this is our react app and we can see this okay so we need to change the text here so it's going to be testimonial so testimonial here and after this testimonial okay so let's uh, uh let's define a class name here we can so that we can have little design here so inside this container so this container we can say testimonial testimonial section and I'm gonna copy this testimonial section and in the CSS I'm gonna have a margin from top and I'm gonna also have margin top I can say maybe 70 pixel and define the height so height is going to be I want to define the height of this section is 80 vertical height we will change it if it is required but for now just keep it this height and you can see we got this height but right now we don't have any data here so um now we need to install our react slick slider okay before that okay let's install it first so just search on google npm react slick slider all right so this is the package that we are gonna use react slick okay mm, here and they have uh, their official website here we will read their documentation how to implement this slick slider and i'm going to explain you each and everything so you just need to uh, visit this npm package link and then from here we are going to install it okay so to install this one we need to copy right select and here inside the folder directory inside the folder directory i'm gonna install it so right force um all right so hopefully it will install and after that it says that so install this package and also install slick carousel for css and phone so this package we will also have to install and then we need to import these two things so i'm gonna copy this one so this package will give us this uh, css style of our uh, slick slider and it has installed now I'm gonna install this one I'm gonna write force and after that we will have to import all these things okay and alternatively if you don't want to install this package you can also copy this link and put it in your um, index.html file like uh, in the public directory where we added our here in this index to list where we added our bootstrap link is gonna also work and now here you can see a little bit of information how to work with this one okay so we will have to import these two css file and then also this import slick slider and okay let's import this slick slider first from here import slider from react slick so i'm gonna copy this one so it is installed and in this testimonial i'm gonna import this one first and after that i will have to add the import this css file this two i'm gonna copy these two and put it here all right so now we have this slick slider installed and we imported the slick slider and here we have a couple of information like how can we implement this one it says that we need to import this setting where we need to define the dot and like the configuration of the slick slider for example this dot we want to auto or we want to stop it this kind of instruction all right and then we need to show our data but for that let's design our api data first and then we're gonna show our slider here so inside this i'm gonna define the api here the way we are designing so const i'm gonna say data so here what exactly we need here we need uh, look at here we need one image 
and then the description then the name and then the position we're gonna use a different name okay so um so the message and then this is the message of the testimonial and then the person name and then here we will add the position not this one like maybe ceo partner developer all right so yeah these are the four things so we need one image and then the description and then the name and then the position of the person maybe ceo partner or we can write this kind of name so first i'm gonna say a uh, name um i can just copy this name here we cannot copy this name right i can we can write this name here i can say emily and this is going to be the name and then so position i can say so position is going to be maybe ceo and then i'm gonna say description a description we can just uh, we can say we can just copy some dummy text just copy this text here or we can say i liked his work he was he work i liked his work i he um i liked his work so i liked his i don't know what i should write here so uh, instead i'm just gonna add uh, some dummy text here okay so i'm gonna just copy this one all right so i'm gonna just copy this one description and after this description so name position description so here we have name position description and then the image so for the, for the image i'm gonna add image img and then here i'm gonna pass the image url so how you will get the image url you can just copy any image url from internet so i have copied couple of emails uh, image url like this image url from the pixels and it's free to use so you can simply so you can simply use like for example so this is the image and this image coming from this image url so you need to copy from google or from you can visit the pixels okay pixel site and copy in the image exactly the image url that you can open this way okay otherwise it is not gonna work so you need to copy exactly the image url where you can open the image so i'm gonna put this image url here all right so image url here so this way we will design our information okay uh, our testimony information i'm gonna copy a couple of more times so and then i can say what is the worst name we have uh we have um then we can say michelle we can say um uh, we can say product manager i can add here he was good at his work he was good at his work he worked on several complex project just some dummy text about the feedback and then i'm gonna copy you one more and this one is we can say we can say what else we have uh charlotte so this is the name i can say marketing manager and i'm gonna change the image here so instead of this image url I'm gonna copy this image URL here and then I'm gonna I think I didn't change this image also right I'm 
I'm gonna change this image as well. So I didn't change the image here. So I'm gonna add another image here. So it's going to be the third one. So I'm just adding a uh, different kind of uh, image URL so that we see different kind of um, image and it will look good. And then I'm gonna say Muller. And here we can say partner and this one is going to be another image so this one is going to be this image I'm gonna put it here then just put another name here so we can say John Doe John Doe here I can say CTO and change the image here so image here I want to add this one and after that John Doe and I can say Martin you can say Martin is going to be a uh, senior developer senior developer and then here you go and how many we have now three so one two three four five six I'm gonna copy a few more and then David and it's going to be full stack and here you go so this one is going to be image and this image I'm gonna copy this one so make sure that you are um, adding thus a uh, correct URL otherwise it is not gonna work okay so it's very important and then we can say Johnson Johnson is going to be a UI UX designer and I'm gonna remove this image here and I'm gonna copy this one so this one is image and this one and all right so we can just keep all this so this is our data our API that we are gonna use in our slider and we will look through all this information and we will connect with this our uh, react slick slider all right so here in the documentation this says that um, we need to import these settings and then we need to wrap this slider and then we can just put our data and so in the document in the doc if you click on it so then you will see a couple of information like example click on the example and let's click in like simple slider and then multiple items then responsive so we will need this responsive because we want to have responsive our slider for example now you can see that it's three in it, uh, in bigger screen and then now if I'm in the mobile view then it has one slider okay as soon as I go here it will take two slider see so these are the thing that I wanted to show you so uh, we will be able to do it using this responsive because in the responsive we are saying that if breakpoint is 1024 then slide to show 3 if breakpoint 600 then slide to show 2 if breakpoint 4, 480 which is a small device screen then slide to show 1 all right and in um, here they have a couple of options so this way we can just uh, make our uh, slider responsive and we're gonna add our slider in the next lecture see you in the next lecture oh welcome back once again in this part we will connect our slider all right so first let's copy this setting because we want to have responsive so I'm gonna copy this setting from here so come to this responsive from the doc 
of this site and then just copy this slider copy these settings all right then we'll customize it and here i'm gonna put the settings here so these are our setting and now inside the, now after this uh, section title i'm gonna create another div so i'm gonna say div and inside this div and class name is going to be uh, we can say testimonial slider testimonial slider and inside this testimonial slider we will have to wrap our slider so we imported slider from react slick all right so i'm gonna copy this name and then add it here and so in this slick slider we need to pass these props okay so we need to add a uh, spread operator and then pass this setting then this slick slider is going to understand that we need these settings for this slider that we are going to add now we have our data we have our api in this data now we can just loop through our data or we can simply say we can uh, simply say data dot map and then i'm going to say item and index here we go and here we need to pass our column so here i'm gonna say a uh, class name um okay so um here i think we are gonna use this responsive slick slider by default so i think uh, we can just continue it this way instead of adding the column here and let's see if it is going to work or let me check it again what we have here exactly in the two it's coming in this two okay so we can directly use uh, this slider responsive i guess so i'm gonna define a class name here first so content is going to be slider so we can say content slider and then pass the key here key is going to be index and now inside this one uh, we need our we need to call our image and everything okay so this content slider i'm sorry so this content content slider will contain uh, everything okay first let's add the image here so on the top we have our image right so here i'm gonna say image, image source and here i'm gonna say item so this item is item dot image all right let's put an ultra here i'm gonna say here um testimonial image and then i'm gonna define a class name here so that we can customize our image so class name we can say uh, center image and we should be able to see our uh, slider here this is our app this is our testimonial section and we can see our image and we can also see the slider but right now at the moment it looks really bad okay we we need to customize it don't worry we're gonna fix it in a moment so this is our class name which is called content slider this content slider is going to contain everything right and after this image we will need another p tag and this p tag will contain the name of the person like the content so i'm going to like the description so item dot uh, description and then i'm going to have another p tag and here i'm going to show item dot name and then another p tag here i'm gonna show item dot uh, position now we should be able to see all this information content description and everything but it looks really bad now we need to design this one so copy this copy this uh, content slider and here um, in this content slider uh, we need to add this one so add uh, we can add 
Okay, so before this content slider, let's fix the um, Yemes. Okay, let's put it here. So content slider padding, I'm gonna add padding 10 pixel and then I'm gonna add color. Choose color, color is going to be white color for this entire section. Then I'm gonna choose background color. So background color, for now I'm gonna choose tomato, we will change this later. And then I'm gonna have margin top. So margin, not margin top, we need margin. So I'm gonna have margin, so margin 10 pixel. And then margin top, 50 pixel, 50 pixel after that. Put text align center and then margin bottom margin bottom 30 pixel and then cursor pointer all right let's see what we have now so we got the background we got the text in the center okay but now we need to fix the image here and to fix the image how we will work for the image so for the for the image we need to add our this class name because inside this class name we have our image so content slider image dot we have defined a class name inside this image which is this class name called center image I'm gonna copy this center image and now here we need to define the height so height and y so define the height 80 pixel white 80 pixel and then border radius border radius is going to be 90 pixel and display is going to be block and the margin is going to be zero auto to put it in the center and we need to add object fit object fit is going to be cover not content so object fit is going to be cover and then after that after this object fit we need to add margin top minus 30 pixel because uh, we want to have our margin like in this way let love so now we have this design so far okay but uh, we can see our slider option also but uh, we didn't get the space uh, we will fix it in a moment so margin top 30 pixel then just put justify content center ln item center i think we don't need all this and uh, let's try yeah so now it looks like this and and let me look at this one so this one is gonna contain everything so content slider so we have content slider and so margin 10 pixel and um, content slider okay so we need to add border here so add border for this image so I'm gonna say border is going to be a uh, 5 pixel so 5 pixel uh, solid solid yellow cool so it looks nice now but uh, it's directly coming uh, we are not getting any space and the reason is that here in this content slider in this content slider we added background color okay so let's add here and let me make it responsive so in the responsive view in the smaller view we have three slider in mobile screen we have two and then one so this responsive is working all right so this responsive is working and this one is coming because in the setting we said that we have added this responsive array here we said that in the breakpoint slide to show three slide to show two and slide to show one and in normal view we added slide to show four there's a reason that in large screen we can see four 
but if we change it to 3 change it to 3 then we should be able to see only 3 posts here all right so now uh, what can I do here um, now we can make some changes here so content slider let's define let's give it a height so height 350 pixels so that every item has same height okay not 3 pixel maybe 250 pixel now it has same height now let's try to give margin left 10 pixel So then it's still we won't be able to see because this margin is coming from this side all right so here is an issue here this is a deep container deep container slider but we can define here a column define here a class name our row so that we get the little space here so how we do it so to do so i'm gonna define a div here and I'm gonna put all this code inside this div and let's put this class name here all right so uh, here I'm gonna add content slider main okay inside this content slider main we will have this design okay and this content slider main we will add margin then we will get the space okay here you go now we can see we got this space and if i remove this margin from here we'll remove the margin left and if i remove this margin also then we don't see anything okay so of uh, we can copy this class name content slider main and we can say margin 5 pixel but it is not gonna work here we just need to wrap it using this and this content slider is the main main text that is that contains our entire design so here we will have to add our margin so add margin 5 pixel cool now it is gonna work for sure and we have this three but now we need to have little margins margin top all right so i think i removed the margin top okay so now we need to call this class this the, the main one here and then we need to add margin top so here I can say margin top 7 pixel here you go now everything is fine it looks good so I want to have this color or any other color but still we need to fix few things for example uh, the hover effect the shadow and it has one icon also so I'm gonna like let me choose any of this color which one is better which one looks good like this one or this one I'm gonna choose this one let's try to take this color code so I'm gonna copy this I'm gonna copy this color code and let's put it here so instead of tomato color I'm gonna put this color for our slider now it looks really nice and we can also add little uh border radius you can see it has little border radius so i can say border radius 5 pixel here i can say border radius 5 pixel now it looks really nice and we can track it this way but it doesn't move right uh, okay there is an issue did you notice it so it doesn't move automatically uh, the reason is that in the slide setting we need to make changes so here this is the setting dot infinite false so you can see that infinite is false so infinite is false so we need to make it true 
so that it is continuously um, move I think and uh, there is another setting that we need to add which is called auto start so dot two okay so the autoplay is missing here so there is an any field called autoplay they have a property here let's check the documentation here uh, select to show where it is and here you go this is the autoplay so we need to add autoplay true then it is going to automatically start our slider okay so i'm going to copy this autoplay and then put it here autoplay true now we should see this one is working but it's not working so autoplay is going to be true let me refresh it yeah now it's working you can see this autoplay is automatically moving from one place to another yeah but now if I again come fast and then you will see okay but uh, let's put this infinite true so infinite true and then speed 500 slide to show 3 slide to scroll uh, we don't need to have this slide to, to a scroll 4 I'm going to remove this one and then uh, we need to add initial initial slide initial slide is 0 but we need to add initial slide 0 slide to show 0 and then initial slide 0 also here you go you can see that now we have all this and one by one is coming yeah that's that's good uh, but here uh, uh, they have another property called called uh, rows rows is let's put two so if you put two then uh, it will show two rows you can see two rows with all the information and in, in, in it's gonna do this one so in many website you will see this kind of slider options okay two row so this way you can just control it so if i put it here one row then it's gonna okay it, we will have only one row but if you want you can also keep uh, two row here that's totally fine i think if you can also put three here depending on your data it will then show now we have three row here and we won't see any uh, slider because we have only uh, eight items okay so i'm gonna put uh, for now uh two maybe that's how it looks uh two is not the perfect uh, scenario perfect use case for our project so i'm gonna just keep it one and autoplay true and if you push uh, if you put put here infinite false then it is not gonna continue it will just uh it it will it will just uh, show you so show slideshow until it's finished okay so if it is in the last position just wait a minute and then it is not gonna go it is not gonna automatically uh, start again because here we said auto we said infinity false now if I see infinity true then it's gonna automatically roll all right so this is how it works now it's gonna roll automatically you can see it will finish it will reach to the last destination and then it will again work now what we have here uh, we can do a little bit of more uh, design stuff for example this button we can just uh, add and then we can also add the shadow here okay so let's put the box shadow here for this content slider so we have our shadow that uh, I'm using so I'm gonna copy this from this one and let's see how it looks here put box shadow then it looks like this it is not gonna look good because we already have a background color so this shadow is not gonna visible here I'm gonna remove this one all right so we have implemented this slider and in the next part we're gonna add the hover effect and also this uh, this button we're gonna customize so see you in the next lecture oh welcome back once again in this part we will try to add uh, this two button color and a little bit of uh, design stuff here so first let's add the button uh, the previous and next button so slick slider has a pre-built class 
for this one so I'm just gonna call this class name and then I'm gonna use it so the class name is uh, slick uh, previous and colon put before not double clone one clone and here so this slicks preview is for the previous button so this class directly coming from the slicks slider so if you are writing anything else it is not gonna work so make sure that you have added uh, exactly the same spelling so preview I'm gonna say um, let's put the color so color I'm gonna choose this color and then put it not important not important I'm gonna put font size also so font size is going to be 30 pixel and let's see if our icon is visible now here you go so this is our icon it is visible now and if I click on it we can go to the next and the same way we need to do it for the next button so I'm gonna copy this one and this one is going to be slick next slick next uh, before and the same color I'm gonna keep and here you go so we have this button we have this icon this icon is coming from the slick slider itself we didn't add this icon it was already there but by default the color is white that's the reason that it wasn't visible so what I did here I just simply changed the color so that it so that we can see it okay now so as soon as it it goes to the to the, to the last part we want to we, if you want we can uh, disable the button okay for example if you are using uh, infinity false you don't want to infinity for your project just for example let's put it false now okay so infinity false and then you are in the last position okay then you can see that this button is automatically uh, disable okay but they have uh, like if you use infinity false then if you're in the last position this button is gonna disable you just come here you go next it's disable and then come here again in the first then the previous button is also disable but they do have another class name to show the disable icon all right so let me show you dot uh, sleek uh, disable dot uh, slick uh, disable plus and here I'm gonna add pointer events is going to be none and if I do it then we should see some changes here let's come to this point and I'm in the first position is disable and uh, this one the disable I can say cursor none or not allowed we can put I think so it's not showing here and it's disable simply all right so then this is not the class name for this one okay to disable this one and uh, can we change the color here and then we can change the color here we can say this color if it is disable let's see if it is working no it doesn't work in this way so now we need to add uh, we need to add the hover effect so how we add the hover effect so this content slider so this content slider contain the entire um, item card so I'm gonna say content slider colon hover and here I'm gonna add background color so let's put the background color is blue violet and we should be able to see background color here but I don't want to have this background color rather I want to have uh, but I want to have this background color or we can choose also this color we have this red color we can do it okay first uh, let's uh, decrease the height here so instead of 250 let's put 210 pixel 
and the one thing that I want to do here so this this name and position I want to put before the description so put it here now it looks like this we have this we can do it okay so I want to have I want to put it out infinite true instead of false I'm gonna keep it true and then and then I am gonna choose a color for this one maybe we can try this color and let's see how it looks so I can simply so when you hover we see this one we see this color but it doesn't look good exactly uh, I thought it would be good and uh, we can choose then maybe this color like the dark one and I'm gonna put it here all right so we have now this color but we need to add this uh, we need to add a little transition here so I'm gonna add transition duration so transition duration is going to be one second so that we get little time here okay so we have this red color and this red is not visible either here so we should choose a different color so what color we have here for this one we have this color and then uh, we can try this light color I think I'm gonna pick this color that. all right so now we have this color and we can also add this kind of shadow here box shadow okay the box shadow that we have so I'm gonna take this box shadow from tech stack like the dark box shadow when we hover so I'm gonna copy this box shadow and I'm gonna use this box shadow here also now we hover we see this box shadow we hover we see this box shadow but uh, I don't want to have it it doesn't look good here so I'm gonna just remove it it's totally fine and let me try to generate some color code here if we can generate some light color code maybe this yellow one or we can change the color to black and if it looks good so color is going to be black and then no that's not a good color here so let me try maybe the green one the light green so that's not the right choice here maybe the pink color we can choose all right so I'm gonna just keep this one this one is better than other one so I'm gonna just keep this one and uh, we don't need to have the black color with this color I think so this is our design all right so now it looks like this which one I copied I copied this one but it's showing this color why it is okay so I think I copied the wrong color code so I'm gonna copy it again okay so it's not okay I'm gonna clear this one now we have this color code it's a different color code so I'm gonna just put it here and now we have this so it looks good and we can do this thing so we have learned how to implement this slider and our slider is working perfectly so I'm gonna stop this video right here and we'll continue from next lecture oh welcome back once again in this part we will implement our contact form section so here in the contact form what we have mainly so we have one image in the left side and we have our contact form information all right 
So let's get started working on it. So first and foremost, I'm gonna have a file for this contact form section. So inside this component, I'm gonna create a folder called contact. So I'm gonna say contact. And then inside this contact, I'm gonna have contact.js file. And we will also need to have one CSS file for this one. So contact.css. Now I'm gonna create the function here and here. Let's import our CSS. So import contact.css. So now we need to connect our contact component to the app component. So I'm gonna import and then I'm gonna say contact and this contact is gonna we need to put it here. So now our contact form our contact component is ready. Now here I'm gonna add container first. So define a container. I'm gonna say class name container and I'm gonna give it a name. We can say contact section. And this contact section I'm gonna give it a height in in the CSS. So this contact section I'm gonna say height is going to be maybe uh, 80 vertical height or more than that. Um, let's put it 100 to 1000 uh, pixel height. And now if I come here in our application then our education section and after the testimonial then we can see this height now and this height from the contact but we don't have any text here but we will add it now. So now I'm gonna divide it. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, divide it into two parts using a row. So we need to define here row div. So here I'm not gonna add any section title, and the reason is that in the contact form we don't have the section the, the the title in the here in the middle of the section. Rather we have it uh, on top of this contact form. Okay. So that's the reason that I'm not gonna add here contact section uh, our section title. So I'm gonna say class name is going to be row and I'm gonna divide our row into two parts. For the image, I'm gonna give it five and then for, th for the input field, I'm gonna give it seven. So I'm gonna say div and here I'm gonna add class name. And this class name, I'm gonna say call Excel uh, five in the large size five. I'm gonna copy this one and then large size medium size and a small size now i'm gonna change it to large size and then i'm gonna change it to medium size and then i'm gonna change it to a small size okay i'm gonna copy this one and then i'm gonna put it here and change it to seven 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 and here i'm gonna put another seven here so total 12 and now in this one I'm gonna add image first so for that let's put a div here I'm gonna say div class name and here we can say um, contact form image and here we need to add our image tag to show our image and then the source so I am gonna use the link of this image that I have. So you can just use any image, whatever you want. And I'm gonna just put it this one here. Let me format it. And then uh, I will have to, I will have to add the ultra tag here. So that if in case there isn't any image, we can show, we can say contact from image. Now we should be able to see this image in our application. Here you go. We can see the image, but we need to customize this one. To customize this image, what we need to do, I'm going to copy this class name and in the CSS, I'm going to have this contact form, then the image tag. And here I will have to add the design of the image. So I'm going to give it a height. I'm going to say height is going to be 600 pixel. And then I'm going to give the white white i'm gonna give a uh, hundred percent if i select it white hundred percent then it will take the white based on the column okay that we have assigned here and then after that 
so white and I'm gonna give it a little bit of border radius so border radius is going to be 20 pixel and then uh, we need to add object fit here so object fit cover so that we get the exactly the good shape of our image and here you go I think it's the same all right so it looks really nice and now uh, I think instead of border radius 20 pixel I can give it 10 pixel okay so now it looks good and here we are gonna add our contact form so for that in this column I'm gonna add all of the f uh, contact form field so first let's define a div here so I'm gonna define a div and this div here and this is going to be class name and class name I'm gonna say contact form design so contact form so contact form design so in the contact form design this this div is gonna contain our entire design for this input field all of this input field okay so how we do it now let me show you so first we have our text so I'm gonna use a div here div I'm gonna give it a class name I'm gonna say text center text center so center and inside this text center I'm gonna use a 5 tech and here I'm gonna say contact me contact me so now what can we see we can see this contact me and this text is in the center and the reason is that I have used here text center and this text center class directly coming from the bootstrap okay so text center is a pre-built class that we have in bootstrap and there's reason that the text is in center if I change the spelling then our text should not be in the center you can see it comes in the left side so just uh, remove now it's in the center now we need to define another um, so here I'm gonna now I'm gonna define the form so form is a pre-built tag from HTML and inside this form tag we will design our uh, input field so I'm gonna define a div here so here I'm gonna say um, I'm gonna give it a name so let's give it a class name so I'm gonna say class name is going to be contact form and then I'm gonna give it a class name so we need to add the level a level let's put the level name is name so now this level means uh, this name okay we call it a level and then I'm gonna add uh, I'm gonna add a input field here sorry uh, input tag so HTML has a tag called input and in this in input tag we're gonna add type so type is going to be a text so type is going to be a text here and then uh, let's give it a class name so class name form control so form now what can we see we can see this kind of uh, input field and here you go so the issue is that here so I'm gonna use this form control and this form control class is coming from bootstrap okay so if you use this one then we can this class is gonna give us this kind of shape like on top we have our level and then we have our um, input field but still we can customize it so make sure that you are using this form control class name otherwise it is gonna give an, uh, you, you will not get the exact design that I'm doing here so now I'm gonna give it a class name for the level and the level na class name is going to be form from level so form level here okay just keep it this way it is not gonna make any changes here but this I'm gonna just wanted to give it if later we need to change anything then we can just use this one 
now let's customize this form so this contact form and then it is input so this contact from class I'm gonna have here so contact form and then the our tag name is input so we need to call our class name and then the uh, tag input tag name okay now here we can add our CSS I want to increase um, I want to increase the size of the contact form of the input field so I'm gonna define I'm gonna give it a height so I'm gonna say height height is going to be uh, 50 pixel and then I'm gonna add a border radius here so border radius 10 pixel and then I'm gonna give it margin top 10 pixel I want to have the white 100% for this one let's see what we have now so we have this kind of design so margin top if I give 100 pixel then we will have this much of margin so I want to have 10 pixels so that we can have little margin from our level all right I, I also want to have okay uh, okay so let's uh, duplicate this one so we need uh, another input field for our email right so I'm gonna just copy this one we're gonna use the same class name so this one is going to be our email and our input types like in the type uh, we can uh, we can okay we can keep this one so now we have this like okay this and this field but I want to have little margin from this bottom also so therefore I am gonna say here here uh, I'm gonna say margin bottom <clears throat> so margin bottom is going to be maybe um, 20 pixel cool now it looks really nice what else we have after that we have this uh, this drop down okay so to add the drop down uh, we need to do it in different ways for uh, the drop down we have a tag called select tag that we need to use okay so we are gonna have the same class name which is going to be contact form so inside this contact form I am gonna remove this one we don't need this label and input field okay we still need the label here but we don't need the need to have input field here rather we're gonna use select tag so this one I'm gonna say job types and here I'm gonna use a uh, HTML tag called select and this HTML tag is gonna contain all of our information so I'm gonna give it a class name so that we can customize it I'm gonna give it a class name I'm gonna say custom select tag and this select tag takes um, oh, another another tag called option and is option is our this option like this option this working student is an option this part-time is an option this contact is an option okay so this whole thing called select inside the select we need to add option and each option contain one items so now inside this option I'm gonna give it a name I'm gonna call it so now what do we have let's see so now we have this select operation you can see this select options here All right, so here I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna say full time, full time. I'm gonna copy this one, two, three, four. So full time. Then I'm gonna say a working student, working student. Then I'm gonna say part time, part time job. I can do. I can. Then I'm gonna say. Uh, contract job so con contract job all right so now we have this working student part-time and then contract wh what we have here so we have full-time working student part-time and contract okay now we need to add the CSS for this one here we are not using okay let me try if this class name is gonna work here so uh, class name if I'm gonna use uh, we can just add the custom design here uh, we can just uh, use custom design for the select tag 
and then if it's gonna work so this class name this class is gonna contain our everything here so I'm gonna call this class name and I'm gonna have the same design that we have for our input field so just I'm gonna copy it and then I'm gonna paste it here and here you go we got the same design here cool right so what I did here like the same design height border radius margin uh, margin bottom and everything we need here so instead of uh, using like previously we were using contact form input and this time I just added custom select tag and then we need to have the height border radius margin and the same design all right so uh, we have added uh, all this and still we need to add uh, this text area and then this button but we will continue with from next lecture see you in the next lecture welcome back once again in this part we will continue working on our contact form so far we have added our job types and then this information the name and email and now we need to add our text area so how do we add our text area to add our text area so they 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 have a so in HTML there is a tag called text area so I'm gonna copy this contract form here because we need the same class name and same design so um, contact form here that we are using here contact form and this time instead of this input tag we will need our text area so I'm gonna replace this input field with text area okay and in text area it takes a couple of more parameters for example maximum length rows so uh, okay now see what we have here we have this text area by default that we are getting but we can define the row here so we can say text area then we can define rows rows we can say four here for example then by default this row this number of rows is gonna open here okay if you want you can also increase it maybe you want to have eight rows for larger box then you you see this kind of box okay so I'm gonna keep it maybe four and we have this so now instead of this email I'm gonna change it to message so I'm gonna change it to message so uh, here so I think we don't need to add any CSS for this one because it's already getting the required design and actually it's not getting the required design um, uh, margin top yeah it is already getting the design from the because we're using the same class name now if I change the class name here for example just to check it then it should work or not but still it's getting because actually it's not getting any uh, design st style here because by default this text area looks like this as and we as we have the column system so it's getting you can see it is not getting the design if it if it is getting the design then we would have a uh, little space from this text as we have here okay so it's not getting now if I remove this one still it's not getting so what can we do we can just copy this contact form and we did it here contact form input then uh, here we can say contact form text area and here we can have the same design and this time we just need to remove the height because we don't want to have the fixed height we are using the height using the row here okay now it's getting the design we can see little space cool after that what we have we have this button so I'm gonna design this button here and I'm gonna add and this button should be inside the forum because when user click on the button we want to send them an email okay so when user will click on the button we will send an email to our email address to contact okay so this is the main reason so I'm gonna put this div here and I'm gonna give it a class name so give it a class name we can say button submit so we can say button uh, button submit and here I want to have a p tag 
and then a message called send now what do we see so we see these things we need to have design and all the required files so button this button submit so in this button submit so we need to add this button submit p and here we need to add all the design so i want to have so let's put this button text first in the center or we can choose the background color first so choose background color um we can choose the brown color for now what do we have here we have the black color so black color looks good here i'm gonna keep the black here so black color and then um put border radius put padding first so padding uh, 10 pixel and then i'm gonna add a border radius here so border radius i'm gonna do 30 pixel here you go we need to have the color of the text so i'm gonna choose text color so put color is going to be yellow i mean yellow green i want to choose now we have this text now we need to put this text in the center and uh, i want to uh, define the white so i'm gonna say white 50 percent and then i'm going to have margin top so margin top margin top 40 pixel and then i want to have cursor pointer all right so we got the white of this one 50 percent and this text now we need to put it in the center right and with the text and with um with the button also so how we do it so i'm gonna say display so display going to be flex and then justify content center and our text is now in center it's okay but we need to put this whole thing in center so how we do it to do so we need to add margin zero auto now it should be in the center okay now it is in the center and we don't need to change uh, if you want you can change we can add a font family here also so add font family i'm gonna choose this one this font family looks really nice cool now i want to have hover effect here so as soon as user click user sh put their mouse on top of uh, we want to have hover effect so how we want to have hover effect so i'm gonna add a background color so i'm gonna say background color let's put this one and change the color to white okay we already have white color i think and i'm gonna add transition duration here so i'm gonna add a transition duration is going to be one second so now we have this one and we can see this color we have this pink color here so we have this red color here and we can try to pick any other color maybe this color we can try i can copy this color code so i'm gonna copy this color code and i'm gonna put it here so this instead of this brown it will be kind of close to brown color but it will look like this so it looks good now it has one icon so i'm gonna put one icon here from react icon react icons so the icon name will be uh, sent we can we, we can just choose any of these from here I'm gonna choose this one I'm gonna choose this one and we don't have any icon here right so we can import the icon icon this one and then I, we can just update it here and just replace it here and it started from ri so I'm gonna change it to ri 
and I'm gonna put this RI here. The icon is gonna be here, and then I'm gonna give it a size. So I think I can give it size 20. So size uh, 20. Now here we go. We got this icon, and it looks really nice. So another thing is that what can I do? I can just okay. So I forgot to add the shadow here. So now uh, this whole thing we can do two things. Uh, I I'm talking about this box shadow. It looks really nice. Either we can keep this box shadow for this entire part or this contact from. Let me try. So I'm gonna copy the box shadow from our previous one, like this one, this box shadow that I'm using. And in the contact, you can see this contact from this contact section. Okay, let's put it in this contact section first. And let's see how it looks. This contact section means our main section that contains the whole thing. Okay, so now we are getting this kind of design. As we have height 100 pixel, I think we don't need to put it 100 pixel. We can just put it 600 pixel maybe. Or put 650 pixel. And uh, we can put margin bottom. Margin bottom we can put 50 pixel. And it looks really nice. Yeah, it would be nice if we can just uh, keep the box shadow for this entire section, okay? Instead of just for this one the way it has here. So I'm just gonna do this thing, okay? So instead of this contact from design, I am just gonna use it this way, like this one, contact section, the main section. All right, so I think that we have uh, successfully designed our main, we have designed our contact form in the most of the part. And what else is left? I hope that you got the main point, but later we will have to connect this contract form with the backend API that we are gonna also do to send our email, okay? So now we have our this design, everything is fine. If I am in the mobile view, then we should be able to see our contract form, okay? Our image, then our contract form, it's responsive, but we will do it. Okay, so, uh, now in the next part, I will try to implement this back to top features and then these scroll options. See you in the next lecture.